five tier one NFTs. Your box giveaway coming soon. Check it out. Good luck. Make sure you enter. Links below. It's going to be awesome. The community itself is deflating the supply of drip and making that price go back up. And if we go hard enough every single month on it, we could potentially really make an impact on uh, the price of drip and maybe outpace the inflation. Just my theory, you know, we could crunch the numbers on it later. Um, do you think that could be possible? Yeah, I mean, the whole point of Only Burns is it puts the power back in the hands of the communities, right? You know, okay. like if a project like let's say you know drip right the the project leads have no idea that they're being voted for by their community on only birds you know they're maybe they're not paying attention who knows right uh and then we just come in the community voted they got the you know the top spot or the second spot or wherever we come in we buy the tokens we check them over to the dead wallet burning them out of circulation like it puts the power back in the hand of the community they get to make that decision they get to decide okay we're gonna we're gonna utilize only burns we're gonna vote for our project we're gonna have that price appreciation from that buy out of liquidity and then you know we're gonna have that supply deflation you know by burning those tokens and and yeah that's exactly how our protocol is supposed to be used Awesome. And even if all, uh, if all of us only put in a small amount each, all the other people who voted for all their other projects, uh, if we get first place, we get the majority of all of that capital to do a really big buy and a really big burn. And then the second, third, fourth, and fifth place has, uh, you know, proportionally smaller uh, buybacks yep. and burns. And then anybody who didn't make it on the list, you know, better luck next time. Hopefully you're holding some of the tokens that were on the list like i was saying with right. the strategy kind of hedging my bets there yeah yeah so like if you have just as an example let's say uh keeping numbers simple let's say you've got a thousand o burn and you want to vote for one of your favorite projects right you know say say your drip or your mdb or your sphere uh you on our burn dap where you're going to vote uh you can input say okay you know this is the smart contract uh that i want to see burnt um you know i'm going to allocate 100 of my o burn to back my vote with that weight that 100 o burn once you submit that vote it is burnt to the dead wallet and it counts towards the project you just voted for and that's how you're backing your vote with that weight right uh, okay. This this encourages those communities and those protocols. Um, it, it brings money through our ecosystem, and it's one of the ways that people who are holding O birds see that value, uh, you know, that increase and that hyper deflation. You know, as as more projects are fighting over those burns, um, it actually speeds up the deflationary aspect of O burn, making your piece of the pie that much bigger. Awesome. So every community member and project and team that is buying Oburn and then voting with it is burning that entire supply forever of the Oburn token, bringing the total supply of Oburn down every single voting round. And then oh. if there are people speculatively trading Oburn, like I plan on doing, uh, then 10% of all those cells are also deflating the total supply of Oburn. So that's probably the most uh, deflationary tokenomics model that I've encountered so far. Do you know of anything that's more uh, deflationary uh, than this model? Not off the top of my head. And I've seen a lot of DeFi projects. Uh, I've been in the space for quite some time now. And, you know, I, I have that consulting firm I, I think we touched on that earlier you know kc consulting where i help a lot of projects map out their tokenomics and i i can say that i've never seen a a, uh, a deflationary model as aggressive as what we've built here this has been a crazy night and this it is been, it's like a three hour long ama yeah yeah, it, it's been fun, though. I, I will say that much. Yeah. It, it's been a lot of fun just being able to chit chat, get to know one another and, and uh, you know, then to this AMA. Um, like, I, I think we spent more time just talking about 
anything and everything than we did actually, you know, here on the AMA. Cyril, thank you so much for spending eight and a half hours hanging out with me on video chat, getting to know each other and preparing for this AMA. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. It's been a blast. You know, I, it's been quite a while since I've had such enjoyable conversations. So, you know, <laughs> thank you for that. And, and, uh, everything that you do here, you know, sharing the news about really cool projects and doing your deep dive into them and asking those tough questions for, you know, providing that value to your followers. So that's, that's awesome. My pleasure. I, I really love doing this. This is the best job in the world i love DeFi. i love all the people in DeFi that i've met and get to hang out with like you and, and like all my friends out here hey everyone it's alex here and on today's episode of the yabonk show i have a very special guest with me today i have cyril keir from only burns and only burns is a hyper deflationary project with the Oburn token that is hyper deflationary and it has the ability to not only burn down its own supply but it can also spread its fire to other projects and buy and burn down the supply of their tokens as well potentially increasing the price of those tokens and you might recognize Cyril from all across DeFi uh, as he has helped numerous projects in the DeFi space as an advisor and consultant and he's also a very well-known and successful trader. Uh, Cyril, would you introduce yourself for the audience and tell us a bit about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so thanks for having me here. I, you know, I appreciate the appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, I'm Cyril Keir. Um, I I got started uh, trading uh, just about 13 years ago. Started in the stock industry. Um, and then it, about nine years ago, started trading blue chip cryptos, uh, about four years ago, moved into the DeFi space. Um, prior to all of that, uh, I've been managing businesses since I was 18. I actually started a wireless internet company with a close friend of mine. Uh, we were living in the middle of no man's land, Virginia. And the only thing there was 14 kilobit dial up or spotty satellite, right? Which, you know, you get cloud covers and your satellite, you know, internet would drop. So, yeah. you know, we started a uh, microwave broadband point to point high speed internet company. And uh, we had were we had five towers up. We had a sixth one that was going up. Uh, the FCC wound up changing the regulations. Then you had to purchase the rights to use a frequency and Verizon bought it out from underneath us for one and a half million. So we wound up uh, closing that business down. Um, from there, started working with a company and I was, I was the guy in charge of going to locations that were performing poorly, finding out why, fixing it up. Uh, whether that involved retraining the staff or clearing house and hiring new staff um, and getting those stores back to top tier performance. And then uh, the problem was I was away from home like 75, 80 hours a week. And then I had a daughter and, you know, about two months into her being born, I was like, I don't want to miss her whole life. Right. So around the same time, my father's health uh, kind of took a turn for the worse. And mm -hmm. he had a, uh, a high end painting and renovation company that focuses on like the custom finishing work and big fancy homes. And so I moved up to Pennsylvania and I've been helping him manage and run that business and, you know, just all the logistics of that. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, and, but when I found DeFi, I really loved the innovation in the space because it was a new emerging market, right? And at first it was a bit of a culture shock for me, moving from traditional investments and, and stocks and then the blue chip cryptos and DeFi is a whole different ball game, right? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. But, I love it. It's the wild, wild west. You never know is. what the day is going to bring. Yeah, no, it, it definitely it definitely is the Wild West, but that means there's new frontiers that are still there to be discovered. There's innovations to be made. And, 
you know, I, I was looking at it and I'm like, oh, wow, you can do so much with this space. You know, the, yeah. the implications and benefits of it are boundless. And um, yeah, so I, I started dipping my toes in a DeFi, uh, eventually launched a corporation uh, that operates in the Web3 space. Uh, we're building a product out to tackle, um, go after Ticketmaster, basically. And we're mm. building out a, a Web3 NFT version of tickets uh, for event mm. managers and, and goers alike. Uh, What's it called? And so, uh, that one's called Parrotly Finance. Oh, right. Um, yeah. 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 And, uh, but that's, that's like the, the corporate side of, of what I'm doing in DeFi. And then there's, there's a lot of room to have fun in DeFi too. And a lot of ways that you can build that, that, um, really tickle the imagination. And I began to notice kind of a problem with a lot of DeFi projects where like they're either they have a whole lot of inflation or they're staking rewards that's diluting the value of the token. And I'm and I thought to myself, what is something we can do to solve this? Right. And thus only Burns was born. Hmm. Yeah. And it's an interesting concept. I've never heard of anything like it before. But once I heard you talk about it, it made so much sense. And it amazes me that something like this doesn't already exist. And right? it's, uh, you summed it up, you summed it up perfectly earlier. Uh, burn as a service. I'm in all these projects that are highly inflationary in some way. And oftentimes the team isn't, uh, doing anything about it or they're working on something else or they're gone but the project's still alive. They're, uh, you know, uh, immutable contracts out there, and I'm holding uh, tokens still. And uh, anyway, I wish there was something I could do or me and the community members could do to uh, stop that inflation from eroding away the price and uh, make the tokens more scarce and burn as a service just so happens to be able to allow people oh. to come together and do that, right? Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. And... Uh... So let, let me, uh, real quick, do you want to give just, uh, like a brief overview of your project only burns, just like a, uh, elevator pitch, uh, bird's eye view of what only burns is. Yeah, absolutely. So only burns, uh, we have the backbone of our protocol and that is our token, uh, ticker is O burn and that's going to be launching after the presale ends January 7th. So presale is going on right okay. now. Um, and, uh, what only burns does is users are able to use their O burn to vote for their favorite project on any network that funds can be bridged to. And, um, what happens is we have a buy tax on our token that we collect in USDC, not O burn. We collect it in USDC and we, over the course of the month, we take all those funds in the service wallet. And then when voting finishes at the end of the month, we buy back and burn the tokens of those top five voted for projects. Right. Okay. So you get Oburn tokens, you get your friends or community together, or you, you're just like out there watching the burn board and you say, I'm holding these tokens. I want the price to go up and the supply to go down. So I'm going to put my Oburn tokens towards that project. And if that project ends up in the top five projects for that month that got mm. the most Oburn tokens, then those Oburn tokens, a portion of it goes to buying and burning the tokens in the top five projects that got voted for. And also a portion of that um, goes to supporting the project overall. And then I believe uh, if you sell Oburn tokens, it actually burns Oburn itself, right? Yep. So it's yep. also the... hyper, hyper deflationary. Uh, just just the Oburn token itself is hyper deflationary. Yep. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So 
it's it's hyper deflationary you know like i'm sure we'll get into the mechanics of it here in, in, in a little bit but it's hyper deflationary because you, when you're enacting your governance you're burning some of your overburn you know to vote for that protocol in order to cast mm -hmm. your vote and then um when someone sells overburn you know that sell tax straight up just burns the token of the dead wallet like we don't collect anything it, it goes away and so our supply you know, is going to deflate over time. So someone who's sitting there holding it, they're going to wind up owning a larger piece of the total supply as the total supply is dropping, right? I see. Um, now, there's a lot to unpack here. And mm. uh, you also have uh, NFTs and uh, some stuff coming in, down the, the pike, down the roadmap as well that we will get into. For now, I want to focus on O-Burn and how I can burn down other tokens or other projects tokens that I'm holding. Any bag that I want to pump, you know, I could get a few of my friends together and say, hey, let's all pitch 50 bucks at this thing and we could probably win or at least end up on the top five and get the price to go up on the tokens we're holding uh, potentially. Mm -hmm especially coming out of rebasing season with that right. being a recent trend. Oh, I, uh, we could really use some deflation in those projects right now. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I, I've watched quite a few projects that were either forks of ohm or, you know, just their own tweaks or, or spin off of that. And I've watched a lot of them just kind of rebase their way into this massive price depreciation because, yeah, I mean, thankfully a lot of DeFi individuals have kind of woken up to the, the, the reality that rebasing does not mean you're making money. It's just, chopping the slices of pie up into tinier and tidier pieces you know uh, you still have the same amount it, it's just you know yeah but, uh, yeah it's it, it's tricky uh to say the least and hard to manage sometimes if you don't know fully what's going on and how to calculate the true value of what you're holding um now uh so that's kind of a brief overview of only burns you got the oburn token and you apply that to uh, vote on whichever projects you want to burn down. The supply of and the top five projects each month will get a percentage of those O-Burn tokens that were uh, used to vote to buy back or just, I mean, just buy and then burn the supply right off the market, right out of the liquidity. And I have uh, a few scenarios I've been strategizing how, if I were to like go in on this, how would I maximize my value? What's like the value proposition here that I could do the best on? And before we get to that, do you have any news uh, or uh, updates, important dates that you want to share with the audience? I know you said uh, January 3rd, was it? January 7th is January when the presale ends. Yeah. Okay, January 7th, the presale ends. Any other big uh, news or updates you want to share? Um. Let me think. Let me think. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we uh, our tier three NFT art is almost fully completed. We're going to have that back most likely um, by like Wednesday. Um, we have uh, all of the contracts completed for our burn swap. Uh, we actually are shipping off all of the code to be audited by Interfi. Uh, and we should have that audit completed prior to launch as well, because I'm a firm believer of, you know, get your stuff audited ahead of time. I mean, I have full yeah. faith in my development team, you know, and I know how to read code myself. And I, I always go through and double check every line of code that they that they package over to our GitHub. Um, but uh, it's always better to have another set of eyes look it over, you know, a third party. And so uh, we have a really great relationship with Interfi, and they're going to be auditing the burn swap code. They're going to be auditing our token, uh, and uh, we'll have that completed prior to launch as well. That's good to hear. I agree. Get the audits done before you launch, because if you got to change something, you're going to have to redeploy and migrate everybody over, and that's a nightmare. Why would anyone yes. want to do that? So. No. Cool. Uh, good to know. Now, I before we jump into the nuts and bolts of how your tokenomics work and everything like that, 
I want to present you with uh, two scenarios. And okay. I want you to hear me out and let me know if this strategy would work in only burns. Okay? So, what if I buy a bunch of O-Burn tokens and I hold them for a while so it hyper deflates and potentially goes up in value? And then what if I buy the top five tokens that are leading on the burn board and use some of my O-Burn to ensure my favorite of those five tokens wins? Will I potentially increase the value of my five bags plus my O-Burn bag? So let's say I buy $100 of O-Burn and then $100 of each of the top five projects. So I got $500 spread among the, the winners. And I put some of my Oburn towards one of those to, you know, for just make sure they win. And then, uh, it, it, what what do you think of that strategy? Would it work? Do you think my overall value would go up in my portfolio uh, in that like basket of goods? <laughs> yeah. So and so I I think you I think you get it. You know, because one one of the uh, any time that uh, you know you're introducing a new concept to DeFi, right? There's there's always that uh, education hurdle to get over when you, when you gotta when you gotta show people like how it works and how they can strategize and and take advantage of the ecosystem that you're building. And I, I think you're on key there because absolutely you can do that. Cool. You know, and, and that's how it works. That's the whole point of it. You, you know, like, you know, if you have a big bag of something like, you know, like MDB, Sphere, Drip, you know, um, and you want to see that price appreciation, you know, you can buy some Oburn, you vote for your projects that you hold that bag in, you can get your buddies to do so as well. And then you're gaining the benefit of that price appreciation from when we do the buy from liquidity. And then when we burn the tokens that we purchase, reducing the supply right so you're actually buying the tokens from the liquidity which directly affects the price so the price from those yep. buys is immediate so it's not yep. like you uh burn some tokens and then you guess nothing happens for a long long time you're actually buying these immediately out of liquidity the price goes up the buy shows up on the order book and then those yep. tokens you're removing from circulation forever and sending them to the null dead wallet so they're yep. uh, officially technically burned forever, right? Yeah, absolutely. And because I know a lot of projects over the last like uh, two years or so have kind of kind of soured uh, the word burn when they're burning their tokens because they're just burning tokens from their treasury wallet. They're not, right. it has zero impact in real life, right? It's not going to affect the price of the token because all they're doing is they're throwing tokens out that weren't really in circulation to begin with, you know, but this, what we're doing buys it from the liquidity pool, no OTC, you know, over the counter, no, you know, directly from their chart, none of that. Right. Because we're not looking to, you know, boost boost uh, the 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 pockets of of the developers of that project. We were building this for the communities of those projects. That's right. who's going to receive the value proposition and the benefit of our protocol. And in effect, the team and the project as well, because they most likely have that token in their treasury, uh, have some exposure to it, and then also you know the community itself will be getting uh, more attention. The project will have more eyes on it from everybody in this competition uh, trying to win these burns as a service. Uh, we're going to see those top projects on the burn board. And I'm going to, like I told you, I'm just going to buy the top five, a hundred bucks and it, all the every, top five projects. So if it's like MDB, Sphere, Drip, Titano, whatever uh, people are trying to deflate the supply of, I'm just going to grab a hundred bucks of each wait a couple weeks have the burns happen and then you know maybe maybe take profits or just like keep it rolling i don't know yet i'd have to decide at that point anyway that's my that would be my strategy um i've got another scenario uh we've okay. mentioned drip and i had uh i have a huge drip bag i put a ton of my own money uh into drip and it has gone down in price faster then I've been able to compound uh, the value of it. So even though I've been like hydrating basically every day for months, uh, my the overall value of my my drip bag has gone down significantly, like ninety percent plus, right? Uh, it's, 
I put a lot of money into it. It's not, like, I don't even want to say the numbers because if my wife watches this, she will be mad. Uh, no, she, she, she kind of knows. Um, anyway, I want to get the community because, okay, Drip has one of the strongest communities in DeFi that I know of. Mm -hmm. That's what attracted me to DeFi uh, in the first place. It was actually Drip, first token I, uh, I ever bought uh, nice. in in the DeFi world. Um, so uh, if I were, uh, and I don't, like Forex Shark, the developer, has been saying he's going to do this and that for Drip, but it's like been months and months, like a year, and he hasn't really done too much because uh, he's been focused on Animal Farm, which is like his new baby. And then we're all sitting over here like, are you going to give Drip any love? um help us out here so uh i have like a i'm i'm part of the drip community and i want to be able to maybe go to the drip influencers and other drip community members and be like hey you know if if we're not sure if the developer is going to build us out of this inflationary situation fast enough uh that that you know then we like uh can we do it ourselves? Is there a way that the community can come together and burn down that supply and increase the price? And then you approached me with only burns and I'm like, okay, maybe if I get the influencers and community together and explain to them that we can actually do a burn as a service. There's enough of us. We got enough capital. We each throw a couple bucks at this thing. We win the burn every month. And all of a sudden the community itself is deflating the supply of drip and making that price go back up. And if we go hard enough every single month on it, we could potentially really make an impact on uh, the price of drip and maybe outpace the inflation. Just my theory, you know, we could crunch the numbers on it later. Um, do you think that could be possible? Yeah, I mean, the whole point of Only Burns is it puts the power back in the hands of the communities, right? You know, okay. like... If a project like, let's say, you know, drip, right, the the project leads have no idea that they're being voted for by their community on only birds, you know, they're maybe they're not paying attention, who knows, right. Uh, and then we just come in, the community voted, they got the, you know, the top spot or the second spot or wherever. We come in, we buy the tokens, we check them over to the dead wallet, burning them out of circulation, like it puts the power back in the hand of the community they get to make that decision they get to decide okay we're gonna we're gonna utilize only burns we're gonna vote for our project we're gonna have that price appreciation from that buy out of liquidity and then you know we're gonna have that supply deflation you know by burning those tokens and and yeah that's exactly how our protocol is supposed to be used Awesome. And even if all, uh, if all of us only put in a small amount each, all the other people who voted for all their other projects, uh, if we get first place, we get the majority of all of that capital to do a really big buy and a really big burn. And then the second, third, fourth, or fifth place has, uh, you know, proportionally smaller uh, buybacks yeah. and burns. And then anybody who didn't make it on the list, you know, better luck next time. Hopefully you're holding some of the tokens that were on the list like i was saying with right. the strategy kind of hedging my bets there um so cool i will think about that uh, a lot actually and see if i can talk to some other community members and influencers and organize something like that to help out my bags that are you know i i've had already people in the titano community reach out to me ab about only burns and say hey do you think we can deflate titano faster and increase the price and i'm like oh. maybe um, and then there's also, you got, I won't get into this too deep yet, but you've got NFTs that like, I could get one of these like tier three NFTs and it would double all of the, uh, voting power I would have with my Oburn. So my Oburn would essentially be worth double in terms of what, uh, utility it has. And then yep. I could have all of the people that I gather, all my community members and influencers, they can all send me their Oburn tokens. And then I push all of that into your DAP all at once with my wallet, with the tier three NFT and all of that Oburn from the entire community of drip, for instance, would be worth double. And that would be like almost in my head, like a guaranteed win. Like how do you compete with that? Um, right. And that would be huge. So yeah, I, 
that anyway, we'll get into those NFTs later, but I've got all sorts of strategies with this. All right. Uh, well, you're, you're dead on track with, with what you were talking about with that, because I know Otter Clam, a protocol on Polygon and Firebird Finance, a, a uh, really awesome DEX aggregator on Phantom. Uh, they both want one of those tier three NFTs because they're going to have their communities send the Ober into that wallet so that they can double the, the, the voting power of their entire community to, you know, really fight for that number one spot. So we've already got protocol protocols themselves thinking that way. So yeah, you're, you're definitely on track with that. So I've got competition you're saying, and if yes. I, <laughs> if me and my people win, then we get the most benefit from all those other communities vying for the same thing, making our buy and burn way bigger in, yep. in the grand scheme of things. Like instead of just like the capital of a small group of people, it'd be all those other teams and projects and communities vying for that top spot. Could be a lot of money potentially, right? Yeah, because our protocol uh, precedes that uh, that wallet for the buybacks and burns precedes it with some funds at the start of each month. So there's already something there to fight over. And then as the protocols are fighting over it, it increases the amount that's there for the buybacks and burns. So, you know, it, it's it's very much a competitive space. And for some who may be familiar with the curve wars um you know it, it's it's just like that it's the curve wars of burning and and we have that leaderboard right there you can see you can you can watch as your vote counts towards the protocol you're voting for awesome yeah curve wars that's more of an advanced DeFi topic not yeah. uh many people might know what that is but it's basically people uh fighting over uh governance tokens in like uh in like a in a decentralized exchange to change the 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 amount of rewards that go to certain liquidity pools so you could basically like guide where the majority of the rewards go which would be towards your bags that you're holding yep. right like and in this case my bags would be like mdb and drip and like i don't know like kyoto and a, a few other ones um and i would like to really pump those bags i'll be completely honest i know people are like oh my god influencers are always pumping their bags that is literally <laughs> going to be my strategy here is to use your utility here uh to to pump my bag and benefit the tokenomics of all those projects i'm in by limiting their supply and increasing demand so yep. in this case if you're pumping your bags with the only burns uh ecosystem it's not a bad thing all right uh, yep. in my opinion yep. Uh, you know, not not in not in the classical sense that we've heard out here the past year or two in DeFi with influencers. Now, uh, okay, my next strategy I want to ask you about: Can I make money just buying and holding Oburn and selling it down the road? Yeah, absolutely. Because you know, it, when when you purchase the Oburn, especially if you're getting in during pre-sale, right? You're getting it at that fixed price. Our launch price is going to be the exact same thing as pre-sale, right? But of course, once you launch, any purchase increases the price, right? Yeah. But you're getting it at that fixed price. Um, and we have our initial starting supply. And then as our ecosystem is being used, as people are using their Oburn as governance for, for voting for their favorite projects, or as, you know, even as people are selling it, right, that deflates the amount of Ober that's in circulation, you know, because all that's getting sent to the dead wallet, right? So right. let's say initially you purchase like half a percent of the supply, you know, like, hey, you know, that's that's kind of whale status right there. But, you know, got yourself a nice little piece of the pie. But as that supply is deflating, you still own the same amount of tokens, right? Yeah. It's not like a negative rebase project where you, your tokens reduce in relation to the right. supply. You still own that same amount of tokens. So as the total supply is coming down, you now have a bigger piece of that pie, right? And right. so... Due to money flowing into the liquidity pool from people purchasing Oburn, um, you know, and then when they turn around to sell, there's less Oburn going into it because you have that burn, right? 
Um, so there winds up being more of the USDC in the pool compared to over. And so you have that natural okay. price appreciation from the, the supply reduction, right? The same thing we're doing for other protocols happens in our own protocol. And so then you're getting that price appreciation, plus you're getting a larger portion of the total supply just be, by holding the ones that you have. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely, you can benefit from the Oburn token. All right. So if I understood you correctly, the uh, the liquidity pair, the LP, is Oburn is the numerator, and the USDC is like the denominator, kind of. So let's put it like uh, only Burn and uh, USDC. Now, when you buy, you are uh, removing only burn from this equation so you're lowering the only burn value here in this part of the the lp pair ratio and then if you sell you are adding usdc to uh to here so there's there's more of the uh uh usdc than the oburn previously so it's like every time you buy you're pulling oburn out of liquidity and then every time you sell, you're adding USDC to liquidity. So that ratio uh, is going to be more heavy on the USDC side, making each O-burn uh, more valuable uh, uh, in terms of USDC. So, right? Did I, did I explain that correctly? Kind of. Kind of. Kind of. Yeah. So when, when you have your initial liquidity pool, right, when you create it, you have your fixed your fixed ratio. And so we're just going to go, uh, you know, half and half here because that's what liquidity pools are. It's half your token, half the, you know, USDC. Right. right. And and what happens is when people buy Oburn, the amount of Oburn in the pool reduces and the amount of there USDC. You go. Yeah, that's a good up. way to show it. Yeah. Right. But when they sell, since there's that burn when less Oburn goes back into the pool and the USDC. So now you're still, the USDC is now higher than the Oburn. Even, even, even if they bought a hundred Oburn, right? So, so the USDC goes up and the Oburn comes down. When they go to sell that hundred Oburn, you have that 10% burn. So 90 Oburn's going back in and 90 Oburn worth of USDC is going out. So you have that extra, 10% of USDC okay. that's staying put, right? Okay. So you're over time, what's going to wind up happening just through typical transactional volume, people buying, selling, buying, selling, buying, selling, buying, selling, you know, but it's going to skew the USDC side because of that sell burn. So what winds up happening is you've got less O burn in the LP, but more USDC backing it. And that's what causes price appreciation. Awesome. You explained that very well. Thank you for that. That That is educational for me and for probably a lot of my audience. And even though I work with this stuff every day and I have an understanding of it, you articulated it and, and visualized it uh, super well. So that's awesome. So over time, just through volume churn, the uh, liquidity pair is going to go down in terms of O-burn and go up in terms of USDC, thus making right. the a uh, smaller amount of Oburn in the liquidity pool worth more in terms of USDC. Right, because, you know, the way the pricing is, is calculated out for all tokens is amount of Oburn divided by amount of USDC, right? You know, in this right. situation, and that's where you get your price per token. So the less Oburn in there, the more value it has uh you know price wise due due to how those pools are calculated you know the more money there is available in the lp backing the value of the token awesome so that's great so in terms of my question can i make money just buying and holding on to the oburn token speculatively it, as long as you guys uh, are churning volume uh over time then Theoretically, according to the mathematics, the Oburn token uh, dollar value is going to go up, essentially. Yeah, you know, as as our that volume is occurring and those buying and selling, I mean, just the mathematics of it, you know, derive. And since we're paired to USDC, it's not a volatile asset. 
Meaning like if we were paired to Matic, you know, then you got to calculate, okay, well, is Matic going up in price? Is it going down in price? And that's going to mess with, with that whole ratio, which is why we're pairing yeah. USDC. Right. That it's way. more uh, resilient for like bear markets and things like that, where the price <laughs> of the speculative token in the LP pair could go down like Matic, right? Right, exactly. It, it reduces the other half of the volatility, right? And then that way your price is your price, not also influenced by the price of something like Matic or, or you know, BNB or, or what have you. Yeah, and that often gets very confusing for me when I'm trying to deduce the actual value of whatever I'm holding. If it's paired with something like BNB or Matic or whatever, it's just like, well, is the price going up or down because of buy and sells, or is it going up and down because of BNB going up and down? You know what I mean? Um, right. Now, what I know we touched on this a little bit in this explanation, but what makes Oburn uh, hyper deflationary? So the, the Oburn hyper token itself. Yeah, yeah. So you have the ten percent sell burn, right? So just from the buys and the sells, you know, every sell ten percent of it's going bye bye forever. You know, if someone's selling a hundred of it, ten of it's going away. You know, uh, and then in order to back your vote with weight, so that it counts on the burn board and moves, you know, moves your favorite project up that rankings, you can allocate uh, your choice of however much Oberm you want to back your vote with. And when you're backing your vote with Oberm, that Oberm is burnt, right? So as protocols and communities alike are voting for their projects to capture those, those nice buyback and burns to benefit them, they're deflating Oberm. You know, so that's that's our benefit that we get by providing this service of burning as a service, right? And so that creates that hyperdeflationary aspect for Oberm, benefiting the holders of Oberm. So every time somebody uh, uses their Oberm to vote, you're saying that Oburn, some of it actually does get burnt for good. Is that right? Or did yeah. I? No, okay. you're, you're correct. You're correct. In order. So let's say you want to vote for uh, drip, right? Um, you can put your vote in how much weight your vote carries is entirely dependent on how much Oburn you're backing your vote with and whatever Oburn you assign to back your vote goes off to the dead wallet. The community itself is deflating the supply of drip and making that price go back up. And if we go hard enough every single month on it, we could potentially really make an impact on uh, the price of drip and maybe outpace the inflation. Just my theory, you know, we could crunch the numbers on it later. Um, do you think that could be possible? Yeah, I mean, the whole point of Only Burns is it puts the power back in the hands of the communities, right? You know, like, if a project, like, let's say, you know, Drip, right? The the project leads have no idea that they're being voted for by their community on Only Burns. You know, they're maybe they're not paying attention. Who knows, right? Uh, and then we just come in, the community voted, they got the, you know, the top spot or the second spot or wherever, we come in, we buy the tokens, we check them over to the dead wallet, burning them out of circulation. Like it puts the power back in the hand of the community. They get to make that decision. They get to decide, okay, we're gonna we're gonna utilize only burns, we're gonna vote for our project, we're gonna have that price appreciation from that buy out of liquidity, and then you know, we're gonna have that supply deflation, you know. By burning those tokens and and yeah that's exactly how our protocol is supposed to be used awesome and even if all uh if all of us only put in a small amount each all the other people who voted for all their other projects uh if we get first place we get the majority of all of that capital to do a really big buy and a really big burn and then the second third fourth or fifth place has uh you know proportionally smaller uh, buybacks yeah. and burns and then anybody who didn't make it on the list you know better luck next time hopefully you're holding some of the tokens that were on the list like i was saying with right. the strategy kind of hedging my bets there so you're telling me 
that every Oburn token used to vote gets burnt in its entirety, and every Oburn that is sold, 10% gets burnt as well. So all Oburn that gets used for its utility of voting gets burnt. All 100% of voting Oburn gets burnt, and all Oburn that is sold for profit or whatever, 10% of that gets burnt as well. Uh, did I get that right? Yeah. Yeah. So like if you have just as an example, let's say uh, keeping numbers simple, let's say you've got a thousand O-Burn and you want to vote for one of your favorite projects. Right. You know, say say your drip or your MDB or your sphere uh, you on our burn DAP where you're going to vote. Uh, you can input, say, OK, you know, this is the smart contract uh, that I want to see burnt. Um, you know, I'm going to allocate a hundred of my O-burn to back my vote with that weight. That a hundred O-burn, once you submit that vote, it is burnt to the dead wallet and it counts towards the project you just voted for. And that's how you're backing your vote with that weight, right? Uh, okay. this, this encourages those communities and those protocols. Um, it, it brings money through our ecosystem, and it's one of the ways that people who are holding Oburn see that value, uh, you know, that increase and that hyper deflation. You know, as, as more projects are fighting over those burns, um, it actually speeds up the deflationary aspect of Oburn, making your piece of the pie that much bigger. Awesome. So every community member and project and team that is buying Oburn and then voting with it is burning that entire supply forever of the Oburn token, bringing the total supply of Oburn down every single voting round. And then oh. if there are people speculatively trading Oburn, like I plan on doing, uh, then 10% of all those cells are also deflating the total oh. supply of Oburn so that's probably the most uh, deflationary tokenomics model that I've encountered so far. Do you know of anything that's more uh, deflationary uh, than this model? Not off the top of my head. And I've seen a lot of DeFi projects. Uh, I've been in the space for quite some time now. And, you know, I, I have that consulting firm. I, I think we touched on that earlier, you know, KC Consulting, where I help a lot of projects map out their tokenomics. And... I, I can say that I've never seen a, a, uh, a deflationary model as aggressive as what we've built here. That's awesome. So the bigger this gets, the more people that participate, the more projects that participate, the faster the Oburn token burns itself down and mm -hmm. just trading volume with the sell tax burns it down as well. So I'm planning, probably I'm buying a bag just to hold on to and see what happens. And I'm going to buy a bag to, you know, burn and vote with to pump my five other bags that I will buy that if I see them on that burn board. Uh, and I'm probably going to try to uh, get the votes to win for Drip, uh, Kyoto, and MDB because I got big old bags in all of them. So I'm going to try to rally the troops and burn those down. Then I'm also going to be holding a bag of Oburn on the side and watching a limited supply of Oburn uh, get burnt down. And then people are going to keep buying the Oburn to vote and participate in every vote every month. So the price should be going up from that buy action. And then the supply should be coming down from the burn, hyper deflationary burn that snowballs every single month. And uh, that sounds like it could be pretty interesting to me. What yeah, happens yeah. if it goes down to like one Oburn token? <laughs> so the cool thing is um, you do have uh, anytime something is percentage based, right? You have what's called the law of diminishing returns, right? Meaning that, uh, you know, because 10% of a million is a lot more than 10% of a thousand and 10% of a hundred, right? So yeah. like 
while that that deflation percentage remains the same, we're going to see, especially in the early stages of our protocol, that deflation is going to have a much bigger impact on the total supply, which is beneficial to community members, projects, um, even even protocols themselves that are looking to capture a good chunk of that supply because you're going to have a larger burn percentage um i mean the percentage stays the same but you'll have a larger burn effect during the beginning right so you'll have that that very quick you know deflation as protocols are using in the beginning because that 10 percent of of uh 975 billion is you know 975 million or sorry uh nine nine billion seven hundred fifty uh million uh, uh it's, uh, it's, it's 4am here. So oh, yeah, yeah. We've been talking all night. Yeah. 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 Uh, six hours at this point, I believe. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. We've had a wild conversation and, uh, yeah. So yeah, 975 billion tokens to start out with. You've already mm. burnt 25 billion of them. And you're thinking that, uh, because of the law of, uh, diminishing returns, uh, look, you're pulling out fancy mathematical terms it'll go from 975 uh billion and as it gets closer and closer uh to zero the price should uh you know conversely start going up proportionately right. in, in some manner right right you know that the when you have such a drastic deflationary model it causes that price appreciation right and so it's going to get <clears throat> it's going to get expensive for protocols down the road to try to get enough governance to fight with the other protocols that maybe were smart enough to get some in the beginning oh, and so they have okay. a larger amount of governance at their disposal right so it almost if hmm. you think about it it makes sense to get a good chunk like either during pre-sale or shortly after we've launched um while our while our supply is still you know higher and and the price is still close to launch price things like that because if you sit on a good chunk of that down the road when our protocol is being utilized by so many other protocols for those buybacks and burns. And there's a lot of money flowing through the burn wallet each month, you know, a lot of money going towards buybacks and burns. Um, you know, you now have this nice stack of governance that it's gonna be hard for other projects to compete with. So there's that long-term mm. strategy that you can do as well. Interesting. I see what you're saying. And all your bonks here could buy himself uh you know a chunk and just sit on it like i was planning on and then buy another chunk to play with and vote with to try to you know uh push the vote in my favor towards my favorite projects but then if i just like squirrel away a good chunk of this as it's hyper deflating um those will be worth more and more and more and they'll be harder and harder to get because of the limited supply and increased demand mm -hmm. as more people fight over these then ideally I could just sit there and speculate on the de hyper deflationary nature of Oburn as everybody else participates and buys and burns their own tokens. I could just be sitting back here, just like waiting, uh, waiting to sell someday and, uh, try to turn a profit that way. Right. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, there's, there's so many different strategies that people can use with our protocol. So many different ways that you can tackle, you know, what you know, you set your goal, basically, you decide what way you want to benefit from our protocol, whether it's to use it to vote to pump the value of bags you have in other projects, um, maybe a token that, you know, died and, and you'd like to, you know, see, see some gains from that. I mean, you could vote for that if you want to. I, I, in a couple of discords of dead project at this point where they've got those core holders who still haven't, you know, let go because they're hoping that maybe someday some price will come back. Well, they could bring that back. Right. Yeah. Use I was actually in our... a project like that where the team just ghosted they like slow ghosted us at, uh, over months and we they, we held out hope holding our tokens forever and basically to zero i lost so much money on that and the community Oof. was so strong though and like so 
uh, ready to work together to do anything to fix this, but the team just wasn't there. We had no control over the smart contracts, over development of the website. We had no control over anything, but with this, we could have just rallied together and just kept winning and buying and burning that token and bringing our, our bags back to life and getting more maybe eyes on the project and maybe getting more people to buy it because they would see the price action going up. Um, right, because you got to think yeah. Coin Market Cap, Coin Gecko, you know, they show those top movers, and if all of a sudden a project, you know, spikes up from a buyback and burn in price, you know, that shows up there. That's extra visibility. That's that's uh, marketing material for Twitter. Like, there's so many different ways that it benefits protocols and communities alike. Now, what happens if uh, can, can a project just like wait and then just snipe? the vote right uh at the end and steal it that way i mean theoretically if they use enough oburn and burn enough oburn to snipe that vote i mean it's fair game right there's it's it's war you know people are people are fighting over those burns so theoretically yeah they could do that so like in this example it's like infographic you guys have um mm -hmm. All these people, you know, this is me and my friends hanging out here and holding some O-Burn. We use the Burn Dapp to vote for our favorite projects, which would burn all of that O-Burn, deflating our O-Burn supply, making the price go up over time. Anyway, that Burn Board, let's it shows your MDB at the top, which is one of my biggest bags, as my audience knows, if they've been watching me for any significant I'm, amount of I'm time. I'm in the, uh, the Yacht Club Millionaires Club myself, so I, nice. I get it. <laughs> yeah. And I would love uh, to to see MDB win this thing. That would be awesome for me and uh, and you. So uh, burn board here, and let's say let's say Sphere. Now you know Sphere is all about uh, you know the governance wars thing, right? Wasn't that like one of their original uh, business models was to buy the governance and all these different things, and then uh, yep. you know, bribes and all this stuff uh, in these protocols, um, bribe wars or whatever. Now, what if Sphere steal, like, like, what if there's, like, one day left in the vote? Could Sphere just, like, wait, 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 and then drop, like, 50 grand on the vote, push themselves up above MDB before MDB has enough time to react? Kind of like an eBay auction where you're, yeah. like, you're waiting that last moment to then drop the, the big bomb and, and win the auction. Do you guys allow that kind of thing, uh, or do you have any anything to prevent that from happening, or is that fair game, like you said? That's fair game. That's the nature of the burn wars, right? You know that that that's a strategy that you can do. You can wait and you can see, but you also got to mm. think the protocols. So our burn board, like that, well, that we're looking at right there, is just a little visual example. But our burn board, it's going to show you the total amount of funds that's in the burn wallet, you know, waiting to be deployed at the end of the month. It's going to show you, okay, this is how much based off of the current value that first place is going to wind up getting as a buyback and burn. You know, second place is going to get as a buyback and burn. It's going to show you all of those. So protocols are like, okay. We could, you know, uh, first place is, you know, going to get like a $27,000 buyback and burn based off of the volume that Oburn's had this month. You know, um, if we, so it would be a net gain for us to spend up to X amount. Uh, so as long as they could snipe that vote for up to that, you know, amount that's still profitable for them, then it makes sense. I right. See. So, you know, there's there's a little bit of, uh, you know, calculations there that you want to do, but we make that easy by showing on the burn board, okay, this is the amount of funds that's currently available. So, you know, it almost makes sense to kind of wait a little bit more to do your voting until near the end, you know, closer to the end of the month. So you get a general idea of like how much, you know, uh, should I deploy to vote for my projects because now i can see okay you know there's a, a twenty seven thousand dollar buyback of burn waiting for first place so okay. based off of my liquidity pool that would be a 18 percent price you know hike for for our project or or whatever it may be right yeah um and uh so 
you know, you could say, okay, you know, I've got a bag of a thousand bucks over there. That would, that would jump it up, you know, uh, 180 bucks. So it would make sense to me to vote to make that win up to, you know, that amount, right? Because that's where your profitability margin is. And so there's a lot of different ways that you can play that. Uh, do you have those calculations yourself or on your team? And if you do, I know you're like a mathematical wizard. Uh, would you be? Would you ever provide that as part of the DAP to like allow people to calculate that on the fly uh, or anything like that? Or that have so to be all one, community made. One of the things that I made uh, I made my right hand uh, developer Sam uh, shed a few tears over was I told him I want API calls on our DAP that basically look at the smart contract pair for the projects that are being voted for, <clears throat> sorry, uh, looks at their liquidity pool and then runs a calculation based off of the spot that they're in. So like if you're in the number two spot, I want it to, you know, let's say MDB is in the number two spot, uh, get a $9,000 buyback and burn uh, based off of the volume. I want there to be a little section there uh, and so he coded that in much, much to his dismay, uh, where it shows, okay, this is what the price impact would be. You know, th this is how much it would cause the price to go up Dude. when this, when this buyback and burn is performed. That way it's there. You can see it. It makes the decision easy and you know how best to, you know, play this to your benefit. Yeah. Cause then it's no longer like a mystery to me. Right. It you know, I wouldn't understand what's going on. I would just, you know, vote and pray. <laughs> well, now you don't have to. <laughs> now you don't have to. So if I'm like, all right, I'm holding 200 Oburn, and, you know, I put that in your little calculator, and it shows if I put that in, it would get this project to number two, and it would have this impact on their liquidity pool, thus bringing the new price of that token to this amount. And yep. I would be able to see if that price increase happened, the amount of, say, MDB I'm holding would go up in value equivalently, you know, to that new price. And I could say, right. is that worth that 200 O burn that I want to personally burn to make that happen? And if not, I would just go get a few friends like, like you, Cyril, and be like, hey, do you want to go have these on this? 100 of my O burn, 100 of yours. And, and then it doubles our, uh, our, our, our cost benefit ratio in yep. this, in this equation and you'd say yeah that's kind of a no-brainer and then uh we only spend half of uh the oburn and we get the same benefit and if you could do that right. on a wider scale like you're an influencer with a youtube channel you might be able to convince a lot of people to to go have these with you and in that case it might be like split between a hundred people and we each only put in one oburn and have the exact same effect uh, right. And and that that burn app is going to show you how much O burn has been burnt to vote for that project. Right. So if it, let's say uh, you have a larger bag in the project that's currently in second place and you look and you're like, oh, you know, for another, you know, 500 O burn, we could bump this from second place up to first place. Let's get it right. You know, so yeah. it'll show you that. So it makes mm -hmm. it easy. It takes the guesswork out. It, it's it's clear as day. Will that be ready uh, by launch on January seventh? Yeah. yeah. Wow. All right. That's that's awesome. I didn't expect you to have that kind of advanced like calculation uh, functionality on the actual DAP. I thought it would just be like a uh, one little input uh, field text box that you just like put in how many Oburn you want and you click submit uh, and you pick a project from like a, a select drop down menu and that's it. I thought that's all it would be. But you're saying you're gonna yeah. have this with an API it's going to be reaching out to different, uh, you know, like deck screener or coin gecko or wherever getting prices for things and liquidity and doing all those calculations on the fly and allowing you to figure out the the price impacts your moves are going to make, uh, on the leaderboard projects. Yeah. Yeah. So, and our API calls pull the information directly from the blockchain, because as we all know, I'm sure we've all experienced at some point, CoinGecko will occasionally glitch out and it will yeah. say that your bag has suddenly gone to zero. Or one time I had, um, 
Zerion, you know, tell me that I actually had a decillion dollars in this one project. I had to look up what that number was. It was so freaking you huge. Finally I like, made it, man. Right. <laughs> I'm like, hold on, hold, hold, hold up. I'm going to go buy the solar system. You know, you know, screw this. I, I'm w the wealthiest person in the universe at the moment. <laughs> Um, and, you know, that's one of the reasons why, like, um, chain link oracles are so important in smart contracts, because it'll allow you to get uh, prices from, like, multiple sources and average them together or over multiple time periods and average them together. So that way you aren't susceptible to flash loan attacks. Right. Uh, well, if somebody's looking into, like, protecting themselves from exploits, you know, flash loans... Uh, you know, that's why you got to be careful where you get your prices from. Anyway, sorry about it. Yeah, get off and that's why we there. pull it directly from the blockchain. What, what we do, so when you're pulling info directly from the blockchain, especially from a liquidity pool, you do a call. It looks, it checks how much uh, of the token is in there versus how much they're paired to, gets the price of what they're paired to, divides it by the amount of tokens, and then you get the token price, right? So yeah. you're able yeah. to get those values and it's the hard math that's right there on the blockchain. There's no oracles, there's nothing. It's just, this is what it is, right? There's no room for error. There's no lost in translation. It's just, that's what it is. And that's the method that yeah. we use for that. And, and it's, uh, and it's totally fine too because this it like that's just a projection calculator to estimate things. Like, it, right. if it if it were to like get a funky value ever, it really wouldn't affect anything at all. Uh, because the flash loan thing I was talking about is mostly for dexes and things like that where people can yeah. steal things. In this case, this would just be for projected calculations. Uh, for a, a calculator like it wouldn't actually have any real world impact if that were to have any issues with it. it's just a cool tool uh to have because otherwise i was going in here blind but this adds a whole another layer of gamification to it where i'm gonna be sitting there running all the numbers like okay if i do this many or if i can get you know uh, i've got a couple hundred people in my discord and a couple hundred people in my telegram servers uh if i can get 50 people to put up 20 bucks we could all make uh two hundred dollars each, yep. right? Like that's those are the value propositions that I think really make sense, and it adds a new layer of gamification for the socialization of decentralized finance, which is super yep. cool. Yeah. Now, uh, all right. So we, I think, I understand now the uh, hyper deflationary nature of Oburn, and I think I understand the voting mechanism of using Oburn and how that affects uh, the Oburn tokenomics and deflates it and all that stuff. And I also figured out how I can make money in uh, a couple different ways here if I play things right. So let's let's carry on now that I think we all have a good understanding of, uh, of those topics. So um, are you concerned, uh, first off, that like some communities or projects might just like team up and just win it every single month and just like dominate it? Well, you know, it. I fully expect that the number one spot is mostly going to be taken by larger projects, but they also have a larger liquidity pool, right? Smaller projects are going to wind up, you know, they'll get second, third, fourth, fifth, but they also have smaller liquidity pools so that's why we scale logarithmically the the amount the percentage of the total funds collected that's being used for the buybacks and burns across those top five positions so mm -hmm. if you're in a, if, you know if you're in a project that has a liquidity pool that's um you know uh five hundred and forty thousand dollars then a twenty seven thousand dollar buyback and burn represents uh, you know, 10% of what you have in the U S you know, the USD value of your token. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. if you're in a smaller project that has, you know, I don't know, maybe like, um, you know, 80, 150,000 or whatnot, you know, you're still going to get a solid benefit because 180,000, you know, that's, that's 90 grand of actual money um that your tokens paired to because that's the way liquidity pools work right you know it shows you 180,000 but only half of that is the actual like what you're paired to the value, the value token 
right yeah. so a nine thousand dollar buyback of burn is again a 10 percent price impact on that well not including price impact at the buy which so it actually makes it a little bit more than that so we scaled it like that right that way smaller projects that are coming in second third fourth fifth etc they're still getting a value benefit so yeah those bigger projects they're going to be the ones slugging it out over first place you know maybe second place um and absolutely if their protocol it wants to utilize our protocol to get all those buybacks and burns more power to them that's the whole point you know is putting the power back into the hands of the communities to decide i'm going to vote for this i'm going to vote for the project that i love that's the one that i want to see buy back and you know bought back and burnt um but yeah i mean that's that's the nature of it so if there's uh like a behemoth that is just monopolizing the number one spot and just buying back and burning their token in in large quantities every single month um then you think organically uh smaller projects that would kind of be in that uh number two zone naturally would then be using that calculator to figure out okay how how many Oburn would it make sense for us uh, to win that number two spot? And they would, mm -hmm. they would strategically, they would know number one is so far uh, away. It's not, it's not worth it. We can't get there, but number two, we can. And if we put in, you know, X amount of Oburn, we can get X amount for buys and burns. And then they can make that calculation and see if it makes sense for them. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, if you have a big behemoth project coming in and just like Tonza Oburn backing their vote to make sure they get number one, well, guess what? They're growing the value of the total buyback and burn, oh, which man. affects all the projects coming in second through fifth. You know, that's it, awesome. It all right. So, so if a behemoth in here is trying to monopolize on it by just outbidding everybody to get uh, that that value from the buyback and burn then all the smaller people fighting over two three four and five they're going to get uh, a very large benefit from it because that behemoth is putting up so much to guarantee them that first vote so no right. one else can touch them but then everybody else who's fighting over number two and number three there it's going to be uh, very worth it for them potentially because there's already going to be so much uh capital getting used for buybacks and burns exactly crazy all right that that's uh man there's so many layers to this game i uh i think this will be super fun to uh to be fully transparent with you let me let me pull up the uh infographic here uh so number one uh the number one spot is going to get 60 percent of the funds used for yeah, 60% of the funds collected. Yep. So number one gets 60%, number two gets 20%, number three gets 10%, number four gets 6%, and number five gets 4%. So that number yep. two spot, let's say the behemoth comes in and throws out $100,000 to win the first spot, uh, and then let's say everybody else throws in, like, uh, you know, combined another $100,000 to get two, three, four, and five. So we got $200,000 in the pot. They're going to get 60% of that, which is what uh, $120,000. Sounds so about they, right. So they put in 100,000 and they get uh and they get 120,000 out, I think. So what is uh 60% of don't judge me for my math skills right now. It is 4:40 a.m. been doing it's, this. It's 120 percent. Yeah, 120 dollars. Uh, sorry, 120 thousand. <laughs> so, so they they would actually get quite a benefit here. Um, like they're they're gonna get what 20 percent. They're gonna put in a hundred thousand dollars in that example, and even though they know nobody else is gonna even compete on their level, at the end of the day they're still going to get a 20% gain uh essentially in terms of the buy power of their dollars per se or uh whatever they use and and that's all going to then 
get burnt uh, from their tokens. So their token price is going to go up. It's going to be a $120,000 buy on their liquidity pool. That's burnt forever. And they only put in $100,000 to do a $120,000 buyback and burn. So that's crazy to me. Like, yeah, in, in the example you provided, that's that's how that that would work, right? You know, if there if there is that two hundred thousand dollars in the pot, you know, and a hundred thousand of that came from them, you know, that's sixty percent, hundred twenty thousand. And I I know that uh, I could think of quite a few protocols that maybe have you know around a million dollars in their LP, meaning they actually have about five hundred thousand of of value backing it. You know, one hundred twenty thousand dollar buyback and burn of that. I mean, shoosh, that, that's that's, that's some that's, that's some crazy. price increase. You know, <laughs> right now, like most liquidity pools I see are around one hundred thousand dollars in the DeFi projects I mess around in. Like one hundred thousand dollars is generally in like a lot of like the seniorage protocols and tomb forks I mess around in. You know, there are some big ones that uh you know I make videos with and stuff like that that have a ton of liquidity, but they're very rare right now. Uh we have a lot of small projects out here that it, a 20% movement like that, or like $120,000 would be massive for them. Now, I just want to do the math real quick. So $200,000 times 20% is $40,000. Now, let's say two, three, and four. Let, let's just say these other projects. I'm not even counting community members throwing in uh, to, to help make this happen. I'm just saying, let's say five teams five projects are battling it out just to get that extra value here for big buybacks and burns let's say number two three four and five each put in twenty five thousand dollars each in my example there's two hundred thousand dollars first place put in a hundred thousand dollars two three four and five put in twenty five thousand dollars each number two would get twenty percent of that two hundred thousand dollar total pot meaning they would get forty thousand dollars in buyback and burn value Meaning they just got basically fifteen thousand dollars free, a set not you know basically free for winning this thing, and uh, so they put in twenty five thousand and they get an extra fifteen thousand, and it all goes back uh, to buying back and burning forty thousand dollars. They only put in twenty five thousand. That's some good ROI right there, eh? That's that's crazy. <laughs> What's fifteen thousand? divided by 25,000 like that's like 60% gain right yep. so in that two, scenario they actually wind up coming out uh, more on top than the number one spot does you know just just due to the nature of of uh, you know the math there for you know saying they put in and in reality if they're getting second spots because they spent more than three four and five right so right. that skew would be a little different in reality they probably spent yeah. closer to like thirty thousand to get the second spot you know third spot probably spent maybe like twenty thousand and so on and so forth right so there's right. there's that you know that's how it would re work out in reality but you know to keep math simple you know, I, I see what you're saying there, but yeah, 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 yeah. You know, still, still a solid ROI on what they spent. Right. So yeah, that would be like a rough estimate starting points. And then, yeah, you could uh, uh, fudge the numbers a bit to get a more like realistic scenario. And that's not even counting retail participants like me and everybody else trying to uh, add into it to make sure that their project wins. I'm just saying five projects fighting it out and one's a behemoth, everybody uh you know can still do extremely well with a behemoth trying to monopolize that number one spot every time the other ones are right. going to benefit from that right which is why there's no reason for us to restrict that you know like it's it's a right. free market right you know if protocols want to want to fight it out like that if communities want to fight it out like that they are welcome to you know we have this the percentage uh skew set up in a way that it should still be beneficial to all protocols participating now things get uh I, I i told you when we first started this or before we started that i i wanted to focus so much on oburn and just the voting buyback and burn game that is going to be the main utility the main driver for this project but there are other layers of gamification that we haven't even uh touched on like the nfts so um 
before we hop into the NFT discussion, um, how do projects get into these burn competitions? Do they like open a support ticket in Discord or something like that? They don't need to. They just straight go to the DAP. You know, uh, they bio burn from our burn swap. They go ahead and and they do their burn vote. Like they're they don't have to reach out to us if they don't want to. They they just go do their thing because they're going to be using the same portals that regular retail investors and community members are going to be using. It's it's all through that. Interesting. So the burn swap on the DAP will be like you swap your O-Burn and then you just select from a giant drop down any token from any EVM compatible blockchain? So the way that it works, burn swap is how you buy and sell O-Burn with USDC. Okay. And the reason it's it's skinned very similarly to quick swap, right? But the reason why the, the transactions take place through our burn swap for buying and selling is because typically if you have a token that has a tax, and it's on quick swap when you're collecting that tax it ain't coming back to you as usdc it's coming back to you in your token meaning you then have to turn around and sell the token into your liquidity pool to get that money right anyone who's been involved in projects that have contract sells because they have a token tax they're familiar with those big red candles from when yeah. the protocol had to sell to get uh, that money right yeah i, remember. I don't I remember. like that i don't like that yeah. so we we created a way where we actually collect the usdc side from the tax that 10 percent buy tax in usdc prior to the swap taking place that way we don't have to sell our token in order to collect that that tax in usdc to do the buybacks and burns with so we're not hurting our own protocol to get that money right so that's yeah. why the buys and sells take place there and that, uh, that's good to know my question was actually a little different than that i so i i i was asking how does a project like uh like mdb or sphere here or Otter oh Ram, how do they get on the list how do they get on the list yeah so here's here's the cool thing our burn vote dap what you do is there you from a drop down you select a chain right oh. and then you paste the smart contract of the token nice assign how so our system will automatically pull the name of the token to add it to the leaderboard or the burn board okay. it will check the lp it'll populate those numbers everything like that right wow. that way uh you're not having to scroll through a list of a hundred thousand freaking tokens to find the one you want to vote for right you just you grab the, the token address paste it in there after selecting the correct chain um and boom it's in there right projects don't have to come to us to get listed or anything like that it's your community they want to come they want to vote for it great you know they can do that very cool that's awesome to hear as a developer uh, I think that's a uh, very good uh, dynamic web app functionality hooked in all the smart contract stuff and on the blockchain. So that's awesome, man. Uh, good to hear. So it's super easy for projects to get on the burn board. They don't have to do anything. Nobody has to do anything on your side. Anybody can go in here and just say, I want to put my O-Burn on this uh, token on this blockchain. Just paste in the smart contract address. Boom. And it's good to go. Cool. All right. Great. Um, now, uh, real quick, uh, the fees, if, when you buy Oburn with your burn swap, like you were saying, and you take that, that 10% in USDC, uh, how do the fees get distributed throughout your protocol in your project? Yeah, absolutely. So 90% of all the fees collected uh, go directly into that service wallet for performing the buybacks and burns. Uh, and that service wallet is a Gnosis safe address, right? Uh, which we publicly display, uh, as you're looking at right now on our white paper. Uh, and then 10% of the fees collected go to the treasury for our protocol, which is that invested into various farming aspects to grow the total value of our treasury 
for you know paying salaries, things like that, okay. operational okay. expenses, et cetera. So uh, just to break it down, uh, if you buy a hundred dollars worth of Oburn, ninety dollars would go towards your Oburn. You'd yep. walk away with that ninety dollars worth of Oburn. Ten dollars then would be split where nine of those ten dollars would go to the uh to the buybacks and burns and one dollar of that ten from the tax goes towards treasury growth for operational expenses of the business right correct all right so in the grand scheme of things one percent of every buy goes towards team expenses, operation of the business, running the project, marketing, yep. all that stuff. Yep. Yeah, right. and that's just slowly build up capital for the additional things that we're building in our ecosystem, which maybe we'll get a chance to briefly touch on, you know, uh, you know, if not, that's fine. Yeah, that, that'll that be the questions. Uh, those are the questions I leave off on, like what do you got coming down in the next few months or years? Uh, so we'll, we'll touch on that there when we're uh, wrapping this up. Now, uh, we should probably go over a, a few quick details. Uh, I know you mentioned briefly here and there, uh, but what network specifically will Oburn launch on? So Oburn and our ecosystem is native to the Polygon network. All right, Polygon network. And what will, you already answered this. So Oburn will be paired with USDC on Polygon network, right? Correct. All right, and Oburn, uh, will that trade on a DEX or is this all going to be going through your burn swap on your DAP and your own custom smart contract? So it'll be it'll be going through our burn swap until a DEX actually launches with the ability to tax the USDC side instead of the Oburn side. Initially, we were looking at launching on Exo Finance because they were supposed to be releasing a, a decentralized exchange that would allow you to tax the USDC side instead. Um, but they're not going to be ready anywhere near in time. So uh, we, we've created our own solution and we'll rock that out until uh, we actually, you know, a DEX does launch with that. That's interesting that that's not like a built-in functionality in DEXs yet. I, You'd I, think at this point, but no, no, they have no one's actually pushed something out yet that that uh, could do that, and maybe that presents an opportunity for us in the future. Who knows? We'll see. Maybe if you've built it and you've got a swap for it, you could easily lease that out or sell it, um, or create your own DEX and charge transaction fees for it. I mean. I ran into this problem so many times in the past where like I would even be working with the developers as a volunteer community member trying to figure out after the fact solutions to this without causing sell pressure on the tokens to get the taxes to fund the project. Right? Like it we it was like an impossible conundrum. But it is. You you just gotta create your own uh swap feature yep. then from scratch at the beginning. Yep, and that's what we did. Okay. Good to know. So I will keep that in mind. Uh, I love I love these interviews. I learn something new every single time. Uh, so pre-sale questions. Um, how big uh, is the pre-sale for Oburn? Do you have uh, so first off, yeah. How uh, do you have a max, and how much are you trying to raise here for your pre-sale? And do you have a minimum that you have to raise to make this work? Yeah, yeah. So we have, um, uh, I believe it's 13%. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, 13% of the supplies allocated towards um, uh, public presale. And, you know, we, we've reviewed the numbers, we've looked it all over, and our ecosystem can launch and function and do everything it needs to do uh, with a soft cap of a third of of that target right you know because let's be honest it's a bear market you know it, it's uh, a lot of people are are concerned right now you know just and um but you know so i like to be a realist right you know um yeah. and, and uh be aware of the macroeconomic situation you know so i wanted to see okay what what is the minimum 
that we could hit and be operational. And so like a third of what we're looking to raise in pre-sale would be, would be more than sufficient for us to launch. So uh, just numbers real quick. Uh, how much are you shooting for and what's your minimum that you need again? Yeah, yeah. So uh, we currently have 150 billion OPR and it's available for purchase. Uh, and if we hit 50 billion of that sold, then we will be uh, we will be ready to rock and roll. Um, and that that comes out to a nice even 200,000 raised during presale, which I believe is more than attainable. Yeah, even in the current conditions. Yeah, I think that uh, is attainable. Now, what is uh, the presale price per O'Burn? Yeah, presale price per O'Burn is zero point five zeros four. Oh dang! Uh, one, two, three, four, five, four, five zeros, yep, and so, then a four. Yep. So, and and presale is capped. Uh, you are able to purchase up to a thousand dollars worth per wallet. Uh, and this is to make it uh, a little harder for a big protocol to swoop in and try to buy up a large chunk of the presale in one shot and mm -hmm. to give uh, fair odds for, for, you know, community members and, and people who may be purchasing for speculative reasons for price appreciation on Oburn. You know, I, I see, I see you over there. You're like, that's, uh -huh, uh -huh, that's uh -huh. like the exact amount I was thinking of buying earlier when I was saying I'd buy a chunk to speculate and I'd buy a chunk to vote with. I was thinking about a thousand dollars five because yep. you know i'm not a super whale or anything like that like i, I do all right but i would do like five hundred dollars towards just holding oburn seeing what happens and five hundred dollars towards voting and that pre-sale max so i would basically be getting like the max benefit and nobody yep. could be like out buying me unless they made multiple wallets though right yep uh, that's okay. correct so you can have multiple wallets to get around the thousand dollar max pre-sale buy per wallet sorry but you didn't I, hear that from me yeah I, I i my brain goes to these things immediately and i just i just say them so uh, that's my job oh. though right <laughs> yeah absolutely absolutely yeah i i know i know there's a couple of people who have who have made a couple of wallets because they they wanted a bit more than that and i'm like hey it's a free market yeah yeah there's not there's really nothing you can do to get around that either so but that's good to know. Thousand dollars per wallet. Uh, all right. So, uh, are there any like transfer fees or taxes nope. on Oburn? All so, right. so no. Uh, I do not like transfer taxes. So there are no transfer taxes on Oburn. Uh, okay. The only taxes are on the buys and the sells. And during pre-sale, there is no tax. Right. So that's that's the benefit of getting in during pre-sale. Oh, You're not no tax. Back. On right pre sale oh cool right so you're getting that more bang for your buck there you're getting that additional 10 percent you know that you know now you're you're not um you're not losing that in in uh you know when you go to purchase uh, it's not going to the to the the wallet for buybacks and burns you know that's that's going to you you've got that extra 10 percent you know voting power or that extra 10 percent for holding for respective the plays so that's okay. that's um one of the reasons to buy during the pre-sale. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, now, what is the launch price going to be? The launch price is going to be the exact same price as what we're selling during public sale. Really? But just with the buy tax? Correct. Correct. Okay. And then obviously, you know, once that's, once that's launched, you know, that you've got the, the price, you know, if people are buying prices going up, you know, if people, you know, you have that volatility aspect of once it's actually launched, it's not at a fixed price like public pre-sale. Got it. Okay. Good to know. Um, now, what are these NFTs that we've been alluding to? Yeah. So um, I'll, I'll give you the opportunity to pull it up on the screen here. Okay. So Bam. yeah. Kapow. Uh, <laughs> first off, I just want to say, I think the art is freaking awesome. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Our, so our NFTs they what they do is they actually boost the weight of your vote so our tier one nfts and bear in mind they are very low supply there are not NFTs. many of them i'm i'm noticing nope. no so yeah. tier one there's only a thousand of them in total ever that's it 
um, during and and what they do is they boost your vote weight. If you have it in your wallet and you go to do your burn vote and say, okay, I want to assign 100 O burn to vote for you know drip or vote for sphere or vote for MDB, um, that 100 O burn that you burn will count as 125. Okay. Because it boosts it. that weight by 25%, right? right? So you're yeah. getting more vote weight, more bang for your buck, so to speak. So you're not having to even spend as much, which then makes your plays that you're doing say like now, okay, I freed up an extra 25% there that maybe I can chuck at another bag that I'm holding as a vote, right? Mm. And, yeah, uh, and, and like I was saying at the beginning of this, I kind of, alluded to my strategy i want to get this tier three uh guy here the 3d looking uh demon fire creature and i there are only 250 of them so my chances of snagging one probably pretty slim but if i were able to get one it would boost my voting power by 100 percent. so basically every oburn that i use from my wallet is worth two oburn meaning yep if as an influencer or people, you know, I have friends out here, I could probably get some people to play this like as a game. I'll be like, hey guys, look, send me all your O-Burn, right? Everybody that you want to, whatever you want to throw in, throw it to me. I'll put it all towards the project we all agree on. And I've got the tier three NFT, which will double our vote. And that'll double our chances of winning whatever it is. So, and, and imagine that behemoth that we were talking, if a project wants to monopolize that number one spot, instead of putting in $100,000 to potentially win it, they'd only have to put in $50,000 if they got the tier three NFT, because that would be $50,000 with the tier three NFT, though, would be equivalent to $100,000, uh, which is when you when things start getting serious at those levels, th this little guy right here, this tier three uh, Supreme Fire Lord creature demon NFT guy. He is a game changer, basically. I can see people be, uh, you know, people will be going crazy fighting over these uh, 250 NFTs. That, that's a super s s low number. I've never heard uh, really uh, NFTs in this sector of DeFi. Most people are minting out like 10,000 NFTs, right? 250 yeah. is super low like i i have 250 people in my private little discord server right like well you know the, we we wanted to keep that low right and, and um I'll, I'll get to why here in a couple minutes but yeah you've got the tier two nfts there's only 500 of those you know the tier three only 250 you know so it's just low 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 lower numbers um and uh you know just during stage one of the minting when those become available for man uh tier one during stage one is only going to cost you a hundred bucks oh geez so like that's a steal um and then during stage one of minting and of course when stage one is going on 33 percent of the total supply is available right um so you'd have that 333 tier one NFTs available for purchase. Oh, wait, oh, wait. So you're breaking this down into phases. So yep. you're only able to get a third of these uh, at a time. Yep. And every phase, it gets more expensive. Yes. Okay. So if this is something that you are wanting to grab to be able to do those you know big brain plays where you're you know voting for multiple projects to boost multiple bags and everything like that big brain it, is debatable but thank you yeah absolutely absolutely you know i think you got a great brain going on in there um you, you, you can actually right there on the website you can see um the 3d models when they were being modeled because there's actually three different variants of the tier three so like we did not have to go as hard as we did with the NFT artwork because they're utility NFTs, right? You know, how yeah. many projects just get one of those little fancy rendered 3D cards or whatnot, and then that's their NFT. They just Most have a different them. number on them. Yeah. Right, right. We went above and beyond for utility NFTs. We made them collectible, 
awesome art, like the company that we had make the NFT art, they create 2D and 3D digital assets for AAA games. They worked on Cyberpunk 2077 and The Last of Us. Like, wow. th this is no small fish stuff. Um, and uh, those 3D NFTs, they're actually going to rotate. Uh, you know, so when you're looking at the metadata and you're viewing your NFT on OpenSea or wherever, you get to see the whole thing just rotating. And that's why we took the care to fully 3D model them, right? Yeah, and, and that is uh, that is great and everything. I got to rewind a second. I know you're uh, very well networked in the space and, you know, I heard about you long before I ever met you and everything like that. And I know you run uh -oh. KC, <laughs> KC Consulting and do work for a lot of the projects out here, even some that I've interviewed, like Neo Masterpiece Films. Uh, they told me you wrote their smart... Your, your consulting company wrote all their smart contracts and things like that. Um, how how did you get hooked up with the teams from Last of Us and Cyberpunk uh, 2077 or whatever? Yeah, so um, it's 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 a, a company called Bull Run Digital, and they exist both. They create those two D and three D digital assets for like these game studios because they work with uh, an actual game development studio and they create these assets. And um, they, I wound up bumping into them through a mutual acquaintance. Uh, they had me um, basically create like the smart contract and the minting DAP for one of their side projects, uh, the mutual acquaintance did. And then, um, I wound up bumping into them because they were doing some of the art for for this nft project that this mutual buddy of ours was doing uh we got to talking we just kind of hit it off and and next thing you know like we're friends and and um now i have this awesome connection with this with the stellar company uh that does amazing work and they do it quick too so you know very very impressed with them well that's awesome so uh a side little benefit uh is that you guys have nft 3d modeled artwork that was made by the same studio that has made some of the most popular triple a video games of the past few years yeah cool man yeah. that that that's just an interesting little tidbit i did not expect that uh you are full of surprises cyril uh very cool man i I literally, I did not come across that in all my, I, I researched this for a long time. I went through all your stuff and I, uh, I didn't come across, was it Bull Run Studios? Bull Run Digital. Yeah. Bull Run Digital. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Honestly, like seriously, if anyone watching this is working on or wants to eventually create an NFT project or anything like that, or maybe you're building a PDE game or whatnot, seriously reach out to me. I will connect you with them because I love their work so much. Uh, I mean, you can find me on discord. Uh, chances are you're probably already in a discord with me. You just don't even know it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like seriously, yeah. your box, how many mutual servers do we share on discord? It's probably ridiculous. Uh, yeah. A lot. Yeah. Um, but we uh, a lot, yeah. like six months ago when I was like, who is this guy from apparently? And I'm like, he's in every server I'm in strange oh <laughs> uh, yeah no, uh, like i've been uh so i mean i've been in some big mover discords back when they were still like winkling towards uh pre-sale like i i i was in spheres discord before they even had uh pre-sale i was in mdbs before they even you know launched um oh geez just a lot of them right yeah but uh yeah, you know, I like so, to sneak my way and, and just quietly watch and, you know, make those connections because, you know, if, if there's a takeaway, success is 10% what you do and 90% who you know, who's in your network, you know, and, and that's that plays a big part of it, you know, just being able to connect with the people because you are not an island in and of yourself, right? You know, you can't do everything. No. So, but if you have a network available to you, of people who are experts in their field and you can maybe do something for them. They can do something for you. You know, there's that quid pro quo and that's how you can build success. Right. I, I totally agree. I spend 
so much of my time and effort building out my network and it has been the most valuable thing I've done out here in terms of time and effort invested even more so than any time I've spent on any video anything like that it's the amount of time I've spent networking and making like real solid connections with people and building trust between players in the space and then like once once you do that you know you help somebody out and they help you out back and then it just grows from there so yeah you yeah. can't be an island out here it's a it's kind of a small space like the players in the space like all kind of know each other and uh, it's not hard to get involved like just like reach out to somebody if you're trying to work in this industry just write somebody a nice message mm -hmm. and you know, say hello be like hey can i offer you this or you know what would you be willing to do this with me just try it ask and uh you'll start meeting everybody that way that's what yep. i did <laughs> A, a lot of people who are kind of movers in the space or whatnot there or maybe figureheads or influential figures they're all really nice people you know i mean i I'm, I'm i always hate it when i see people slinging mud at other people i'm like look DeFi is a huge you know yes it's a small space but there's a big table here there's plenty of room for us to all sit down together and all eat together and benefit one another and grow as a whole like that's the whole point of an emerging space you know right i agree there's like so much growth here even in the fair market this space we are still at the beginning of the adoption curve for DeFi as we know it yeah. so it's like there's just yeah. so much coming into here so many people so much work so many opportunities and uh yeah, you can find good work out here doing whatever it is you're good at or whatever it is you want to try your hand at. There's such a low barrier of entry to DeFi because it's decentralized. Okay, so Bull Run Digital created the artwork for your NFTs here. Now, I just want to really quickly from tier three on down, I want to go over the price of each one. So a tier three, how much does a tier three cost for this phase one mint? Yeah, so during stage one, a tier three NFT is 400. All right, and what about a tier two? NFT? Tier two during stage one is 250. And a tier one NFT costs how much? Uh, 100 during stage one minting. Okay, and just uh, to reiterate, there are only going to be a third of them minted per phase. Uh, so mm -hmm. in this case, uh, there'd be 333 tier one. Uh, at, for a hundred dollars and then each uh subsequent phase would uh cost more to mint correct yeah so for example how much would a tier one cost in phase two in phase two it would cost 200 and phase three uh 350. oh wow okay so uh by phase three a tier one was almost going to cost as much as a tier three does during phase one the final the so tier tier one during the final third phase the the ending cost is 250. the final phase of tier one is yep. 250. yep oh okay and okay so now uh tier three how much would that cost in uh you know 400 dollars phase one how much would it cost in phase two and phase three so for the tier three because there's so few of them it's only going to go through two phases there won't okay. be a third phase during the first phase there's going to be 85 available right and at that 400 dollars cost and then the remainder will be available during stage two for 500. okay and is there going to be a whitelist or anything like that to get the tier threes that are so limited yeah, so there is a whitelist stage uh, for the NFTs, and whitelist for that is essentially full. We we like the demand for it was high. Uh, I have like a handful of maybe like four to five spots that are still free that we're saving for promotional purposes, um, because whitelist is limited by the total amount of tier three that's available during stage one. We could only have 85 spots during whitelist for the nfts you will have 24 hours at your leisure to mint up to one of each of the tiers that way it doesn't matter what time zone you're in you're not having to panic and run to you know beat everyone else to it obviously 
whatever is not sold during whitelist stage for tier three becomes available during when it moves to public. Um, there's no there's no whitelist for stage two though. That's first come first serve. Hmm. All right. All right. Good to know. So basically, I got screwed out of the whitelist on tier three. Nobody told all your bonks here about it. Uh, so I will have to hope that somebody doesn't buy theirs from the whitelist, and I can scoop up the scraps right uh, during public sale. <laughs> You'll have you'll have to fight for it. I you like you know I have uh, I know a couple of people who are trying to scoop up several of those once it goes to public sale. So it's going to be a bloody battle. <laughs> yeah, I mean this like if there, there are only two hundred fifty of these at four hundred dollars, this uh, I would grab one of those uh, super fast, especially with uh, some of the questions I thought out here with how uh, your rental NFT marketplace works. Now that that that's a, a an interesting topic. So I just really quick. Uh, when do these go on sale? So they would be going on sale end of January. Okay, so uh, end of January, Oburn launch is January 7th, and then end of January, the NFTs launch. Yep. Is there anything yep. we have to do or know to get these, like that whitelist you said that's already sold out, the whitelist is maxed out for tier three, right? Yeah. Okay, so... In that case, end of January, I would be fighting over tier twos and tier ones. Yeah, and if any, uh, because again, due to the nature of whitelist, you know, some, some of those people are just going to want a tier one, or maybe they're just going to want a tier two. Okay. So there's going to be there's going to be some excess of the tier three. Like I don't expect all 85 whitelist individuals to mint a tier three NFT, right? You know, there's that's maybe out of some some people's price range you know you never know um so there's going to be some that move into into public sale there and that will give those who maybe didn't get a whitelist the opportunity to quickly scoop one up when it ticks over from whitelist to to public right yeah i might ask somebody in your discord in your project's discord server if uh if they're not planning on getting a tier three with their whitelist spot I might be like, hey, I will buy that off you for four hundred dollars immediately, and uh, you know, just promise it to me, somebody whoever's listening. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, all right, all right, I'm wheeling and dealing in real time, Cyril. So, with all that being said, um, how do these NFTs? So, I know we've talked about the governance boost, uh, like this tier three doubles your Oburn power. How are there any other benefits uh, to holding these NFTs? Absolutely. So bec here's why we kept the supply so low, right? Uh, you discussed earlier the benefits that like projects fighting for number one uh, could get off of having a tier three NFT where they're essentially having to put in half the amount to get double that vote weight, right? Of what they're yeah. trying to put in there to get that first place. So we are going to be releasing an NFT rent marketplace so that people who hold those tier three NFTs can then rent them out to protocols that are looking to double their governance weight, the, the, the power behind their vote. And we, we have a, uh, a new mechanism that we're going to be implementing for the rent marketplace that current marketplaces for renting they're collateral based right so your nft actually goes into the other person's wallet and if they don't return it you get the collateral which mm -hmm. may be fine on an nft project that has 10,000 20,000 nfts but when there's only 250 you don't want that risk you don't want them yeah. to be able to walk away with that so we're we're creating a new mechanism for it that essentially wraps your NFT once it's rented out, points to the same metadata, has the same you know boost, you know for your vote weight everything, and then that's what they get. Your NFT stays there safely in the rent contract once the rental period is over. That wrapped one destroys itself, and you get your original NFT right back from that smart contract that way your nft is not at risk of someone running away with it 
Interesting. So let me see if I got this right. If I have my tier three NFT, my prize possession, I can go to your NFT renting marketplace that will be coming near the end of uh, Q2 of 2023. Mm -hmm. So I will go to that website. I will have my NFT in my wallet. I will say, I want to rent this out for one week and I could just pick the price. Yep. Okay, so fifty dollars. Uh, whoever wants double their voting power this week, fifty dollars. And instead of giving them, instead of sending them my actual NFT, I would send it to your smart contract all through this renting marketplace. This yep. your renting marketplace's smart contract would create a wrapped version of the NFT and give that wrapped version to the renter. They'd be able to use it to double their O-burn effects. And I, I technically still hold the original NFT and yep. uh, get my $50 a week for it and any other uh, benefits that come with it. So the, that, that while it's still with me, I just can't yeah. use it for O-burn power, right? right? Okay. Exactly. Okay. So I, I lose my, if I have the tier three, I would lose my double voting power for that week. I would get 50 bucks uh, income for doing basically nothing. And then somebody can go use that to double their Oburn power. And if it's like that big project I was talking about earlier, putting $100,000 to win number one spot, they'd only have to put $50,000 in, half the amount. They would save $50,000 and they'd only pay maybe $50 in that case to rent out my NFT. At which case I would realize, oh crap, I'm charging too little. Supply and demand, the invisible hand of the market would move me to increase my price to maybe a thousand dollars a week suckers gotta pay to play right and you know that's still a great deal for them they they pay a thousand dollars but they'll in that uh example they would still get fifty thousand dollars forty nine thousand of which would be profit uh a profit you know it's a buyback and burn kind of situation but uh they would get forty nine thousand dollars worth of value towards a buyback and burn that they wouldn't have before unless they rented out my nft and I would be sitting there bidding up the prices with all the other NFT renters uh, who are like, I want to make some money too. Did I get that right? You did. You you hit the nail right on the head there. And and that's that's the beauty of it because, you know, not only are these NFTs, you know, inherently rare because of how few of them they are and the benefit they provide, but you can now turn around and rent them out to other people, other protocols, you know, Joe Schmo down the block, you know, Jerry from accounting, you know, who, whoever wants to rent it and you're earning rental income off of that. Interesting. So if your bonks uh, here can't get one of these tier three NFTs, but I can potentially get a project to rally around this cause like drip if i can say hey you know stun a breezy get everybody to uh, buy some oburn and send me 50 bucks of oburn all of a sudden maybe i've got a few thousand oburn uh i would rent out the tier three nft for that week that i'm going to be casting my vote with every yep. all say for example the drip community's money uh in oburn i would take all their voting power from oburn rent out the NFT, double all of that voting power, and then push my vote, maximizing my opportunity. And then we could win the vote potentially, and all of our drip tokens would go up in price, and all of the supply of the drip token would be burnt down a bit, right? Yeah, exactly. Cool, I get it now. Um, so I see both sides of it. I would love to own one of these and rent it out whenever I need a few extra bucks. Uh, but also I'd like to have one of these so I could, as an influencer, get, uh, you know, some people together to make some moves to pump my bags and help my projects out. And then projects obviously would probably rent them out as well if they had to, um, I, I know our clan plans on getting one. I know Firebird Finance plans on getting one. Like the protocols are, are recognizing this and waking up to, you know, like the benefits of how our protocol can really affect their protocols in a positive way. Interesting. And only burns actually earns a percent of the rent charged, which goes into the treasury, right? 
Correct. And it's not the person renting it out that pays that. It's the person renting it from you that pays that. So with mm -hmm. OpenSea, if you're going to go sell an NFT or something like that, they OpenSea takes their cut out of what you earn, right? Mm -hmm. So like, let's say you want a hundred bucks, you're renting it out for a hundred bucks. A hundred bucks is what you get when someone rents it out the buyer or the the person renting it from you they pay a hundred bucks plus the rental fee that okay. way what you're renting it out for is what you're getting you know you don't have to sit there and try to do mental gymnastics to figure out okay if i want a hundred bucks what do i need to add to it to get a hundred bucks at the end of the week you know that reminds so, me of that Decentralized exchange, the DEX uh, swapping issue we talked about, it's almost the same situation where the seller, uh, the project, has to pay, uh, has to like sell their token essentially to get the, uh, you know, the fees out of it for the taxes uh, and, and everything like that, um, which, uh, yeah, so it, it's kind of a, a similar situation. So the person selling, in this case, uh, they're not going to have to pay extra after they've already made the deal. It's the buyer right. who has to pay that extra service charge there uh, yep. to go back to the NFT renting marketplace. Now, with that being said, will other projects be able to use your NFT rental marketplace for their own NFTs? Will you yes. outsource this? So we're going to offer it as a service. Yes. So nice. here's the cool thing. Right. Let's say you're let's say you're a project, you have a utility NFT, your members are holding it or whatnot. Maybe they're not constantly using the benefits or the utilities of it. You can onboard to our rent marketplace. We don't charge for that because we earn off of the rental income. There's no reason for us to charge. You're adding another utility for your NFT holders plus a percentage of the rental fee goes back to the protocol that just onboarded with us so they're earning from those fees as well i love a i'll scratch your back you scratch mine arrangement right so it's free for them to onboard they're adding a utility for their holders and they're getting a percentage of the rental fees earned from their projects nfts on the rent marketplace that are being rented out interesting like, so okay Say I'm, uh, uh, you know, your bonks, uh, you know, bonkers finance, my, my, my fancy project. I come to you with my new NFTs and I say, Hey, Cyril, I want to rent out my NFTs. I can just join your platform for free. And then when people rent out my projects, NFTs from your marketplace, you get a cut and I get a cut as well as the yep. project as the project that owns you know that created those nfts i you know i'm the creator of that nft collection i get a cut and then only burns that created the nft renting marketplace gets a cut as well still right yep so let's okay. let's say that you're earning you know four thousand dollars over the month of rental income from people renting out your nfts like there's a lot of renting going on you're earning four grand for the month right um initially protocols that onboard they're going to earn 25 percent of the rental fee now here's the kicker if those projects then purchase a certain amount of oburn and hold it in a service wallet they can bump that up to 50 percent of the rental fees charged then they can take it a step further and purchase another increment to earn up to a total of 75% of the rental fees charged. Dang. So okay. this what? provides another way, and this is how it all ties back into Oburn. Everything that our rent marketplace, our NFTs, it all ties back into mm -hmm. Oburn and protocols that are onboarding to provide this utility, to earn this income. If you're earning four grand, a month off of people running out your NFTs and you're like, oh, if I go purchase two thousand, you know, three thousand dollars worth of Oberon, it's gonna bump that up to eight grand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like where's where's the losing scenario in this? It benefits you, you know, yeah, it reduces our our cut off of the rental fees that we're getting from just your project, but 
you're also buying all that over, which creates that price appreciation. You're holding it in the service wallet. If you ever take it out of the service wallet or sell it, one, you're burning 10% of that for us. So thank you. Uh, two, you go back down to 25%. And then we're just okay. earning more off of off of the rental fees. Now so twenty five percent. That is like say say I have I'm an NFT holder and mm. I'm renting this thing out a hundred dollars a week. Mm. Uh, how much would the service charge be, and how would it get split in that situation? Would it be like twenty five percent of that one hundred dollars? No, 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 no. Okay. No. So the the total the total fee that the, that the people renting from you pay is 15%. So if you're renting okay. it out for a hundred bucks, you know, then the person renting it from you, they pay 115 and then they get access to whatever utilities those NFTs have for that duration of the rental period. Um, and then of the, um, so as a protocol yourself, you would get 25% of that as a base. So you'd get $3.75, right? Okay. For each NFT renting out at $100 a piece. Now, if you had um, if you had that Oburn in the service wallet, you know, and bumped yourself up to 50% of that fee, now you're getting $7.50 off every NFT that's being rented out for a hundred bucks. I got you. See how that works? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So initially the fee for the nft rental place is 15 percent. now with these only burns nfts that 15 percent goes all to you uh, and by you i mean the only burns uh protocol the only burns treasury now yep. uh from there if another project hops on board and lets people rent out their nft collection to others they take initially 25 percent of that 15 percent which would be 375 right. uh, like you said in our scenario uh, $3.75 uh -huh. out of 100 and uh, out of 115 and then you guys would get the rest the other 75% then if they pony up and buy uh x amount of oburn uh, uh -huh. and put it in their service wallet and your smart contract checks says yeah the, that that oburn is in that service wallet then they're actually going to get bumped up and get twice as much you're going to get 50% of that fee, which in this case would be $7.50 out of $115 total. Uh, and, yep. that's, and then it can go all the way up to 75% of the fees yep. would go to them, 25% to you. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool model. Um, I can definitely see how that's going to drive Oburn buy volume and hold volume. Yep. Yeah. And it's also very enticing to projects probably to get on here because there's a, another revenue source if they you know it, they can rent out their uh their nfts very easily it sounds like that'd be cool yeah. I, so that's gonna be q2 of 2023 you think that's gonna be ready yeah that's that's our target date for that and of course you know you know how DeFi is you know sometimes delays happen sometimes things pop up but that's our that's our target date for that right now um, and that's what we feel we'll be able to hit and what we're, what we're shooting for. Got it. Uh, real quick, uh, last NFT questions. Um, do you have to like stake the NFT to get the increased voting power or other benefits? You don't have to stake it, just hold it in your wallet. Yep. So what our what our burn vote DAP does is when you go, when you pick your project that you want to vote for, you assign your O burn. When you when you uh, click that burn button, you know to to vote. Uh, it says it does a check. It says, does this wallet hold a tier three NFT? If so, apply the hundred percent boost. Does if, if no, it checks for tier two. If it has it, it applies it. If no, it checks for tier one. Right. So it does that check. And no, they do not stack because imagine if protocols could abuse that. Right. Especially yeah, yeah, yeah. with the rental I was, marketplace. I was wondering if they stacked. OK, good. To yeah. Know. No, no stack. No, it, def it defaults to the highest tier that you have. Good to know. All right. So if you have a tier one, tier two and tier three, it will only register the tier three in your wallet. Correct. And then so you could rent, rent out, out the tier two. <laughs> exactly. I got it. Exactly. Yeah. I, I am going to be a only burns nft mogul i will have uh i i will have many nfts for rent you see come take a look at my wares and i'm gonna be like the guy from aladdin you know with my trench coat come take a look at my wares 
It's the famous Dead, Dead Sea Tupperware. <laughs> That's gonna be uh, what what are the tier ones called? Uh, flame cultists. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna have flame cultists. I'm gonna have supreme fire lords. And I'm gonna have like crazy fire bird doctors. Oh man. <laughs> so uh, all right, all right. Now I know uh, time is of the essence here. We are beyond two hours long. So let's speed Ooh. through some of these uh security and risk questions. Um, okay. And real quick before we get to that, I know there is some other stuff coming down the road. We're going to touch on that at a later date on a later video, probably in a couple months or something. But there will be uh, another thing called arson coming. We're not going to get into it today, but these NFTs will receive a uh, a passive income in arson token at, for an allotted amount. And then it will they will receive a passive amount of stable coins thereafter, correct? Yeah, as a form of profit share off of our treasury growth. Awesome. So that's another NFT benefit if you plan like to grab a tier three like me and try to hang on to it, rent it out, do whatever with it. If you hold on long enough for the uh, arson stage to come, then you will be receiving passive arson token rewards as well as stablecoin rewards after that. Mm. Another passive income stream. I love DeFi passive income. I do too. You know, I mean, that's why my stock portfolio was balanced across a whole bunch of dividend stocks, right? Because yeah. that's my passive income stream. <laughs> yeah. And, and like I said, if I become a NFT renting mogul and I got like 10 of these things and I'm renting 10 of them out and I'm getting passive rewards because they only have the wrapped versions. I have the originals. So I'd be yep. getting those passive arson and stable coin rewards for all 10 N N NFTs and getting the 10 rental fees as well, right? Look at you double dipping. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's how it works. They call me old calculator. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. All right. All right. So uh, real quick, do you have uh, any partnerships or anything like that? Uh, yeah. So it, it's it's um, it's not like set in stone, but we've spoken with quite a few protocols. Several of them really like what we're doing. They they want to utilize our ecosystem. So we've got, uh, like I've mentioned before, we've got Otter Clan, we've got Firebird Finance. Uh, you know, they, they took a real keen interest to what we're building, saw the potential in it. Uh, they want to utilize our ecosystem. Uh, a lot of the people in our Discord are actually from Sphere Finance. Um, they plan on voting to have Sphere burn, you know, so there's that nice. community support. Um, hmm. But as far as like official, like partnership partnerships, um, you know, not set in stone yet, but it's still early. What about the, um, what did I write here during my research the past few days? Chain bet. Do you have a partnership with Chainbet oh, still? Thank you for reminding me. I, I, wow. Okay. Yes. Uh, we have already <laughs> partnered with Chainbet. They're getting the the pool set up. You can actually take your Oburn. You can go to their website and you'll be able to uh, essentially play like different casino games. Like they've got roulette. They've got uh, um, poker, you know, coin cards, a whole, whole bunch of different slot ones. machines. I think. Yeah, yeah, they they actually have like a slew of new games that are coming out before the end of the month too, and you'll be able nice. to take your Oburn and go play that, right? And get a chance to win more Oburn, and whatever the house makes, as in our protocol, whatever we get, uh, we're burning, right? So that's another deflationary aspect. Any any quote unquote profits that the house makes for Oburn casino betting, uh, we're just gonna burn, yeah. Nice. It just pulls it out of circulation, and it gives people the opportunity to win more over. And if they want, you know, as a as a, essentially a free way to kind of you know build that bag up a little bit if you're feeling lucky. Yeah, and I dug down into this partnership a little more, and if you get their token uh, bet, you know, B E T bet, if you stake bet, you get V bet and Oburn. Uh, so you actually get. Uh, Oburn rewards if you stake their token bet on their system. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, if another way to earn Oburn to either play more games over at Chain Bet or to come over here uh, and vote with it or just to hold it to speculate and then sell it when it goes up in price when it deflates some more. 
Yeah, their their V bet. What it does is, if you're staking, if you're staking bet, you know, and you've got your V bet, um, any token that people are playing with on their protocol, you earn a small percentage of that, right? Uh, of what their house takes in. So yeah, you can get Ober, and you can get any of the other tokens they have uh, a die on there. I believe they've got uh, Pburb on there. Uh, they've got uh, they recently added the the Rebellion on there, which is Brent uh, Strishan's project right? right uh so like you'd be earning from a basket of all of that so that that's really cool and nice. we liked what they were building uh and so we were like yeah let's let's go ahead and get oburn uh have that partnership going and uh yeah so once our token launches we'll that will be integrated right off the bat interesting well i am a sucker for casino games of chance and i will surely lose all of my oburn in the casino so well if you uh, have gambling problems please please call 1-800 gambling <laughs> <laughs> if i have gambling problems i will just copy trade you on your ta trades all right that's that'll you know you could be my emotional discipline there so i don't fomo so much right <laughs> not financial advice i know you're not a, you don't you don't give any signals or anything like that now uh let's jump in to uh do you have any other revenue streams for only burns yeah, so we're we're taking all the funds raised from the NFT sales and we're gonna be investing that across like stablecoin farming, exotic strategies on Uniswap V3. Uh small percentages of that treasury will go into higher risk, higher reward, more speculative style investments. Uh and that generates uh profits from that generates and grows the treasury, grows that, grows that value. Um, and so that's why like i mean a lot of projects they sell their nfts and whatnot and then they take those funds and they either pay the team or they use that to start building things etc we're kickstarting that treasury and then that's going to grow and that's going to create that uh revenue stream got it okay uh sounds good to me and so that sounds like a pretty diversified strategy that you're mainly looking to preserve capital but also yes. have a little bit of exposure <laughs> to potentially higher risk, higher reward, new uh, DeFi projects, right? Yep. All right. Uh, and then also you said, or I read the overnight EST hedge system. Is that something you're also still looking to put in the treasury portfolio? Yeah, we want to allocate a percentage of it to that because the overnight finances ETS hedge system allows your treasury to continue growing even when the markets are going down, mm. right? So... Yeah, it, it, it's a really great thing to have in your investment portfolio. And again, I'm, I'm taking my experience from investing in the stock market, investing in blue chips, investing in DeFi. I'm taking the, all of those over a decade of experience and putting that towards actively managing the treasury for safety, security and solid long term growth. Right. Good to know. Uh, I also have heard you are quite the trader and you have made uh, a large amount of money trading crypto the past few years haven't you <laughs> <laughs> i mean I, yeah, well, yeah. I, rumors i've, heard I've done well <laughs> what's that I, I've, I've done well which is great because it means i'm not really I, I, I'm not looking to take a salary from only burns because I don't need it. I just have fun building, right. And building cool things that benefit a whole lot of people and provide value to people who are looking to, you know, you know, park their money into something that's fun and can grow. Right. And right. so, yeah. Right. Interesting. All right. I, and yeah, I, uh, good for you, man. Good for you. Uh, so what do you think? Cyril, is the best strategy for retail traders to use in your project? Oh, oh, that that's tough because it's so subjective. It really depends on what your goals are. But if I had, okay, personally, and this is not financial advice, uh, but if I had like a thousand bucks or whatever, I would put probably 600 into the token and 400 into a tier three. I would then take that tier three, I'd rent it out. I would get that residual income. You know, uh, let's say if I'm renting it out on the low end of just 50 bucks in one week increments to other projects and people, well, guess what? I've ROI'd on the, N on the NFT after two months. Okay, now I have another 400 bucks that I, I can either roll into something else 
or maybe I can buy more Oban with, um, you know, whatever I choose to do, right? So in my opinion, that's what I plan to do okay. uh, because that's the other thing. Like I, if I want a tier three NFT, I got to buy it myself. You know, I, I don't get free mints. <laughs> yeah. Now, where do you buy them on the secondary market? Uh, so the secondary market, well, our NFT rental marketplace, right? Because okay. you'll be able to buy and sell on there too. So it won't be on like OpenSea or anything like that? We'll have it on. I'm sure that people will transact it on OpenSea. That's fine. But, you know, it, it just makes sense. If you're looking to rent it out, you know, you might as well just stay within the ecosystem. Um, you know, our, our I mean, what if somebody buying... buys one and wants to flip it immediately because they know there's going to be demand for it? Yeah, like, I mean, they could do that. They could right toss it up on OpenSea. They could toss it up on our, because our marketplace wouldn't be out at that right. point, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we will have the collection listed there on OpenSea, okay. but, okay. you know, it, it makes more sense once our system is out to use that. Yeah, obviously. obviously. I just want to make sure, like, if, if anybody wants, you know, to uh, exit their position or whatever, like, uh, with their NFT, they the collection will be listed on uh open c if they did yep. want to sell it uh right after launch uh between that and the marketplace being built yep all right good to know now uh real quick about the team uh who else is on the core team and what countries uh are everybody from yeah so core team we've been keeping that fairly light it's myself uh, and Sam. Uh, Sam is here in the U.S. as well. I actually met him in person uh, prior to us really getting started with Only Burns. Uh, yeah, you see him there on the sl slide. His Discord name is Marodes. He's he's uh, from Obsidian Council, actually. I, I know a lot of you have heard of Obsidian Council. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, we have uh, Abtheo. Uh, he lives in the U.K., I believe. Um, and uh, he he does development work with us. Uh, he works with Otter Clam. Uh, he's on their team there as well. And then we have Sketch. Uh, he is our marketing guy. Um, he has a lot of experience with Twitter algorithms. I'm not great when it comes to social media. I, I don't think I've posted anything on Facebook in probably a couple months. Uh, <laughs> you know, so yeah. I, I'm like, look, you handle that. You know, that's what you're good at by all means, go for it, you know? Um, so Abtheo and Sketch, they are, they're not doxxed individuals. Uh, Sam and myself, we are. And as a result, Abtheo and Sketch, they do not have signing access to the Gnosis safe and they do not have access to the deployed contracts. Okay, thank you for that extra information. That is good to know. And yep. uh, you, and Sam are both uh, doxxed and are uh, you KYC'd? Yeah, so I'm actually KYC'd with Obsidian Council uh, in addition to being doxxed. I, I was KYC'd with them uh, when I went through the KYC process for my first company, uh, Apparently Finance. So I've been KYC'd with them for a while. I love working with Taylor. I love working with uh, Papa Big Mac uh and and matt walker uh they're a great group of guys i'm constantly sending people over to their uh developer portal <laughs> yeah i uh i i like the obsidian uh team as well i like i like matthew and taylor and and steph i just sent uh a project her way because uh they were looking for developers i'm like they've got a developer portal like you said um so cool uh oh also uh <laughs> what is your real name and yeah. why did you change it? Yeah, so my legal name is Joshua Hood, right? Um, and uh, it's it's a little bit of kind of a personal story, but I don't mind sharing. So growing up, my mom was a single mom, and she kept getting remarried and remarried and remarried. And every time we'd all have to go through the process of getting our last name changed. Then when she got divorced, we'd get our last name changed back to her maiden name. And it just, I was sick of it. So when I turned 18 and I moved out, I decided, you know what? I'm going to create my own name. I'm going to pick my name. Right. Yeah. And so I went back to my heritage. I'm half Irish, uh, half French. 
So I'm like, I want a first name that's French in origin, and I want a last name that's Irish in origin. And so that's what I did. I found some names that I liked, and that's what I've gone by. Uh, like my daughter, her last name is legally Keir. You know, I... I live in Pennsylvania where you have to be in the same county for five years in a row before you can change your name. And we were like four years in and then we moved to the county next, you know, county over and it reset the clock. Uh, but all my friends, family, siblings, they all call me Cyril because that's just what I've gone by. That's the name I picked for myself. But yeah, legally, I'm Joshua Hood, at least until I get around to filing the paperwork after uh, I have three more years to go before I can do that. Okay, good to know, and thank you for the in-depth explanation. If anybody comes across that and they're wondering why, now you know. Um, all right, so how is the team compensated by the protocol? Yeah, so we had, um, I, I negotiated with them all, uh, for some token allocation that is paid out over the course of four months post launch you know so it's not it's not up front you know it gets paid out in 25 percent increments over the course of those four months um and uh sam he's already stated that he plans on using his to to vote for projects that he's in so because sam he's in a great spot i'm in a great spot like we don't need anything from this we're just having a whole hell of a lot of fun building right so he wants to vote for bags that he's already got in other protocols to boost the value of that i plan on voting for projects that i'm in um but yeah you know there there is that uh you know token allocation i, I see a lot of projects they'll do like 10 or 15 percent team allocation we're four four and a half percent i think of something like that um but yeah it, it's it's uh less than half of what the standard is because again we don't really need it so but uh yeah there okay. there is that uh, little allocation there all right good to know and uh i'm totally okay with that compensation method for the record because uh it has uh mutual incentives and motivation right like you guys yeah. if you're holding uh a percent of the token supply each then you're going to want the project to succeed and the prices of those tokens to go up, right? Um, so you're going to work harder to make the project a success. Uh, and I think, you know, I see the, the mutual uh, benefit there uh, for everybody. Now, for security and safety purposes, I've got a couple questions. Who developed your smart contracts? Yeah, so uh, we actually worked with a couple of individuals. So um i created uh like the initial base for the smart contract um and the nft contracts and then you i know you're familiar with him and some of you may be as well but uh, a very fine gentleman from cardinal house by the name of cole who is a very experienced developer in the space uh also worked on our some of our smart contracts like he he put together the um the burn swap smart contract and uh helped build the pre-sale smart contract um we had um uh Abfio also did work on the pre-sale smart contract and uh sam he's been doing work on the smart contracts for the burn vote system uh so we're, we're very well rounded you know we all have a hand in it uh, and Cole, he's a doxed individual. I'm a doxed individual. Uh, Sam's a doxed individual. And then Abthio, um, you know, while he's not doxed, um, you know, I also don't have him work on the things that are related to finance or could be exploited, you know, so I, okay. I balance okay. it. I put the sensitive things on the doxed individuals and then the things that are not sensitive on, you know, the developers that we have that are are not doxed right okay yeah good to know um all right now are your smart contracts audited and if so by whom i know you mentioned this a little bit earlier do you want to repeat it for the audience yeah absolutely so uh we have an awesome relationship with interfi 
Um, and they, we have actually just packaged up and sent over uh, day before yesterday uh, the burn swap contract and our token contract to them for an audit. And we should have that back uh, and verified post post launch, uh, post deployment, and we'll be good to go. Okay, Interfi, good, good, good. Uh, do you have multi sigs or time locks on any of your smart contracts or wallets? Yeah, so we we have Gnosis safes. Uh, so we have those multi sigs in place. The only individuals who are signers on that are doxed individuals. Uh, to two out of three. Um, that way, you know, it's safe. You know, in the future, as our team expands, I want to expand the amount of signatures required on on the multi sig as well. Um, and uh, yeah, and so our our LP tokens they are held there or will be held there inside the gnosis safe requiring multiple signatures in order for them to move anywhere at all okay all right good to know and uh would your project be able to survive if you or one of the core team members left or got hit by the proverbial beer truck yeah yeah so like um one of one of my neuroticisms is that uh i like preparing for anything so if, if if you trade if you're a trader in the markets you know that in order to be successful you need to have to need to have a plan for if you're right and you need to have a plan for if you're wrong right that way you can seamlessly transition and be adaptable to whatever happens and same thing here so i have plans in place for if one of the developers leaves i have plans in place for if i get hit by a bus i, I actually have this green folder uh i have different seed phrases for every different aspect right and i have them written down on paper in this folder in my safe and my wife has instructions uh, if i were to you know get hit by a meteor tomorrow um aside from being flat uh she would then take that green folder follow the instructions and i actually have a very close friend uh in real life who is very very similarly minded to myself uh and i trust him implicitly um and i could essentially she could hand him that that seed phrase and he knows everything that we're building here he knows what we're working towards he would actually be able to step into my shoes um okay. and uh yeah yeah you know, so all right so you have a, a trained uh replacement in uh worst case scenario if anything were yes. to happen unexpectedly to you yep all right good to know and it's like life insurance you know you you hope you don't have to use it but it's there if you do <laughs> yeah no it's it, it's true it's uh it's a continuity plan it's an insurance uh plan for uh your employees to uh, keep operating the business without them you know in the worst yep. case scenario uh now do you think your project would survive if this bear market continues for another year or two yeah, absolutely. Because here's the thing. If a lot of projects are dealing with uh, prices being in the toilet because of the bear market, it would make sense to rally their communities to maybe chuck five bucks or, you know, maybe 10 bucks into this, our protocol to get those buybacks and burns, mm -hmm. you know, so we, we provide the same value offer to other projects and protocols. Uh, during a bear market that we do during a bull market. The only difference here is that the, there'll be more volume. You know, when bull markets are here and, and money's flowing freely, there'll be more volume, which means we'll deflate faster, right? Mm -hmm. Which, you know, is a win-win for everybody. Um, but yeah, you know, if this bear market, because I don't see this bear market really starting to kind of taper off uh, until like middle of next year and we have that plan in place we're, that's what we're expecting so we're not going to be caught by surprise if it continues got it and you're also paired with a stable coin usdc yeah. which also makes you more bear proof exactly okay. not paired to a volatile asset exactly all right now what do you think personally 
What is your opinion? What do you think is the biggest risk to participants in your project? Hmm. That's a good question. So the biggest risk, if you sit there and, and, and spend your over on voting for some project that nobody's heard of and nobody else is voting for, you know, the risk there is that you're throwing away your over for nothing, right? You know, if you can't single-handedly get it up to one of the top five, five spots, you know, then, then that's kind of a problem. Um, but yeah, I mean, with, with everything that we've built and how it all kind of feeds into one another as that flywheel effect with the deflationary aspect, I mean, uh, I mean, worst case scenario, I mean, maybe you're not running your NFT out like nonstop, you know, maybe, you know, there's some gaps there in your, in your rental income. Um, you know, maybe, maybe, uh, price appreciation doesn't happen as fast as you want it to, you know, but I mean, that supply's still going to deflate, you know, we're still paired with a stable asset, you know, and just wait it out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the, the two main, uh, biggest risks I heard there were, um, number one, that, uh, you, your vote potentially might not go to one of the top five spots and it, you know the project you vote for might get sixth seventh eighth ninth tenth and beyond meaning right. nothing happens and that oh burn you burnt just got burnt um that so that's a potential risk and then the other uh biggest potential risk is if you're speculating on oh burn and you're sitting on it since it's mainly getting burnt by the tokenomics and relying on community participation for the buy pressure, then the price appreciation might not happen as quickly as you might like. So you might have to sit on the over and a little bit longer, even though that supply is still going down, it's still going to require some buy pressure to pull up that price in the liquidity pool, right? Yeah, essentially. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so those are worst case, worst case scenarios kind of right there. And then, like yeah. I, you said, the NFT, if you're not optimally using it, but I don't really see that's, you know, that's just not, I don't really think that's a risk. That's just somebody being lazy. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> so, okay, good to know. Well, so, you know, I, that, that's pretty standard in terms of DeFi. Now, if, uh, yeah. you know, even you get like medium participation from a couple projects and a couple communities, then things get pretty crazy pretty fast, it sounds like. Yeah, you know, and, and that's that's the whole thing. Like the more the more people hear about us, the more projects start using us. I mean, just the faster the snowball effect occurs. But, you know, again, it just like with any DeFi project and, I, and I'm going to straight lay this out there. Any DeFi project, you know, prior to launch, treat it like a speculative investment. Don't go like YOLOing your savings into it, you know, because that's just inviting risk upon yourself that you don't yeah. need to okay? be smart, <laughs> be smart, be intelligent. Don't let emotions grab you, you know, figure out, okay, what, what am I willing to put into a speculative investment prior to, you know, their, their machine becoming operational and, and rolling and, and everything starts, you know, snowballing down the hill and becoming the success that, you know, I hope it to be, um, you know, just have, you know, some, some be smart about it is basically yeah. what I'm getting at. Yeah, and have accountability for your actions. Like, this is DeFi, you know, not financial advice, but hedge yourself appropriately. Um, anything could happen and all that. Not financial advice. This is just a fun game to me and a way we can all kind of play around as a community to affect the tokens and projects that we all love and are holding. and Or, you know, the tokens that we hate because we're holding them and they just keep going down in price. Uh, <laughs> and we want to do something about it. Um, yeah, so I think it's interesting. I'm definitely not going to, you know, go all in on anything I've been telling myself never again for this past year. Good. Not, yeah. But, you know, of my DeFi portfolio, I might put, uh, maybe like, I don't know, a 10th of my portfolio in there. If I got like $10,000, I might put that thousand dollars in here, $600 towards Oburn, 400 towards that tier three NFT, if I can get it and, and then play from there and kind of you know, navigate 
the the scene as it unfolds. Uh, yeah. So okay, that that's gonna be my strategy most likely. Now, uh, in conclusion, let's let's look where you're going. So where do you see this project in six months to a year? Okay, uh, in six months to a year. Uh, so six months from now, we should be able to roll out our NFT rent marketplace. Uh, to provide that rental aspect for our holders, you know, and then our protocols earning some income off of that. Um, you know, we have, you know, up to a year from now, you know, I'd like to be able to see us move forward, come back for another, you know, AMA, talk about uh, what we're doing with Arsene. You know, we should have some merchandise out by then. Um, you know, so like just moving forward with our roadmap, building out what we're working towards and, and getting that initial key aspect of our ecosystem up and running, you know, having that marketplace, having the NFTs, having our token, right? That's, that's key aspect of what we're building. Have all of that done. You know, that's, that's where I want to be. I would love to see, you know, our notoriety in the space growing, you know, protocols, you know, taking advantage of, the, the value that our project offers. Um, and and uh, that that would just be great for me. I, I'd love to be able to, you know, sweep in and, and burn these tokens. And, you know, we, we could burn NFTs too. If, if people vote for NFT projects, we go in, we sweep the floor, we burn them, you know? So there, there's so many different ways for, for us to really hit that. And um, yeah, so that's where I'd like to be you know five you know six months to a year from now is have all all have all that squared away have that notoriety be present in the space you know be you know see projects be like oh you know what yeah i know only burns let's go let's go target you know first place this month you know yeah okay so uh, in about a year probably i'll see you again for uh your arson launch when yeah <laughs> we do a, another video about that later um Cool. So, um, real quick, those uh, buy and burns that you do, so you get all that O burn, and it goes into the service wallet for you guys. The USDC goes into the service wallet. Okay. Now, how manual is the buy and the burn process? Do Do you guys actually have to do it totally manually, or is it like automated by a smart contract? How centralized is that piece of the pie? Yeah, so initially we are going to do it manually because okay. I don't trust most bridging systems. So, you know, uh, I would hate to have like a, a bridge like fail and get stuck, you know, because that happens in DeFi. Right. You know, um, so initially we'll handle that manually. Uh, we're looking at working with projects such as CryptoLink for like trustless bridging uh, aspects uh, to eventually automate it. Uh, I know we've spoken with Firebird Finance uh, regarding using their API as automated aggregation on that network once we move the funds to it. Okay. So like that's that's something that we're in discussion with them about. So I do want to automate it. I just want to make sure that the way we automate it is essentially fail safe and secure. Right. Yeah. Bridging is usually where most exploits happen. It seems like in right. DeFi uh, the past few years. So uh, I figured it would be a pretty uh, manual process on your end. Once the winners are selected, you take those funds and you just manually go over to that chain and buy back and burn it. So good to know. Uh, right. Three to five years. Where do you where do you see only burns? Oh man. So, uh, so at that point, we'll be well on the way to having uh, Project X uh, be put out. Like we're not. Dun, 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 dun. Can't, I can't talk about it. Right. I can't, I can't talk about it at this point. Um, but that should be out by then and that's going to be awesome so I, i'm looking forward to that i want to see that out you know three to five years that's my target for it that's going to completely flip the like it's going to compound the use case of ober and it's going to compound the value of the nfts it's going to compound everything in our ecosystem 
once we release project X and, uh, but we're not, we're not talking about that until we finish everything that's on our current roadmap. Got so it. Yeah. you heard it here first folks, or maybe not, but project X three to five years, ideally will be ready by then. And it will change, uh, everything for only burns. Uh, sounds pretty interesting. I'm excited for that. Hopefully I will have my tier three NFT by then. Now, uh, better get on that <laughs> so um do you have anything else about only burns that you want to tell the audience today uh yeah i mean right now we got the pre-sale going on right so you can get it at a fixed price you get it at essentially locked at lot uh, at launch price you know there's no tax paid on it uh during the pre-sale so it's mm -hmm. really kind of your best opportunity there um you know again not financial advice or anything be smart don't ape you know smart investing right yeah. um but uh yeah and and then um you know go to follow our twitter uh you know join our discord you know if you go to onlyburns.com you can get links to both of those on there i'll put them in and, the description uh, of this video too Nice, nice. And then, uh, you punks, did you, did you want to tell them about, uh, yes, that, the uh, giveaway? Yeah. So, uh, Thyral here was, uh, generous enough to offer my audience here five tier one NFTs as giveaways. So as soon as they are ready and minted, I will give them to the winners. So, I will potentially just keep these giveaways open until Cyril says they're uh, ready to go. And I think we said end of January, You, uh -huh. I think you said that's when the NFT should be uh, published and launched. So uh, yep. when I uh, when I get some time uh, here, I will set up uh, an entire giveaway contest and I'll run it for a couple weeks. Let everybody get in that wants to get in and... Uh, yeah, five people will win uh, a, a tier one NFT here. The the crazy fire cultist NFT gives you twenty five percent boost on your Oburn votes, and then also potentially in the future when arson comes out, you might get some arson drips and some stablecoin drips. And then uh, best thing, you're gonna be able to rent it out in the NFT rental marketplace coming out probably. Uh, Q1, Q2 of next year, Q2. Q2. So a couple months from now, you should be able to earn some passive income renting out those NFTs. So five tier one NFTs, your box giveaway coming soon. Check it out. Good luck. Make sure you enter links below. It's going to be awesome. Now, uh, I just want to tell the audience, we've been talking since 9 p.m. No, 10 p.m. It is now 6.30 a.m. <laughs> We've been talking for eight and a half hours on video chat, Cyril. This has been a crazy night. And this it is a, it's like a three hour long AMA. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's been fun, though. I, I will say that much. Yeah. It, it's been a lot of fun just being able to chit chat, get to know one another, and, and uh, you know, then to this AMA. Um, like, I, I think we spent more time just talking about anything and everything than we did actually you know here on the ama yeah <laughs> and i like that because i i do like to get to know people out here that i'm working with project owners players in the space so i'm glad i got to spend so much time getting to know you for anybody watching yes i am probably biased now because cyril is a likable guy and I've had a great conversation and a great time hanging out with him tonight. And also, I think Only Burns is pretty cool. It sounds very fun. It's very promising. It's new. It's unique. I'm going to get into it. So my personal opinion, completely subjective. Cyril did not pay me to say this. This is my opinion. I am probably going to try to get that Tier 3 NFT myself and maybe some O-Burn tokens. That's my strategy. All that. Now, with all that being said, uh, Cyril... Thank you so much for spending eight and a half hours hanging out with me on video chat, getting to know each other and preparing for this AMA. 
Absolutely. Thank you for having me. It's been a blast. You know, I, it's been quite a while since I've had such enjoyable conversations. So, you know, thank <laughs> you for that. And, and uh, everything that you do here, you know, sharing the news about really cool projects and doing your deep dive into them and asking those tough questions for, you know, providing that value to your followers. So that's, that's awesome. My pleasure. I, I really love doing this. This is the best job in the world i love DeFi. i love all the people in DeFi that i've met and get to hang out with like you and, and like all my friends out here so thank you uh everybody watching for all the time uh if you got this far you're incredible and be on that lookout for the five tier one nft giveaways that i'm doing over the next few weeks check out only burns at go to their discord go to their website go to their twitter page check them out and say hi to Cyril when you're in there. Thank you everybody for your time. I will talk with you later. Bye.